ready. I think I'll hand over to Mauricia to say a few words at the start as the uh, online moderator and uh, uh, generally uh, introduce the programme of presentations. So, um, Mauricia, if you're ready, uh, shall I uh, hand over to you? All right, okay. I'll All just right, okay. I'll just read it. Sorry, a glitch. I didn't realize I had to switch on my uh, laptop. Uh, <laughs> I've been speaking to the room here on the mic. So um, I was just saying uh, that I'm the, uh, the on site uh, moderator here for this uh, Internet Society session. And um, on, the, on the Collaborative Leadership Exchange uh, program, uh, of projects for supporting and strengthening the internet. And uh, we have a, uh, an online uh, moderator too, um, Mauricia Abdol, who is um, waving on screen now. Thank you, Mauricia. And I'll hand over to you now, really, to, um, to start the ball rolling and introduce the, the program of presentations and, and so on. So, um, okay, Mauricia, over, your, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. I hope I am audible. I'm leaning into my screen so that um, I'm closer to the mic. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for joining us at the Internet Society's Collaborative Leadership Exchange meeting. We are very excited to share, uh, or to actually give the floor to our ambassadors that will be sharing some of the work that they have been doing. And before we do that, um, we have the honor of having our director of fellowships in the room with us today. Her name is Ms. Alejandra Prieto. And before we give the floor to our ambassadors, it would only be uh, appropriate and, and correct to first allow her to say a few words. Um, so to kick off our session today, I would like to introduce you to Ms. Dar Ms. Alejandra Prieto, our director of fellowships. The floor is now yours, Ms. Alejandra. You can take over. Thank you, Mauricia. Thank you, Mark, for moderating on site too. It's a challenge sometimes to have on site and online moderation uh, people both places, but I think we will manage. Yes, be positive. This would be a great session. We have a lot of people with us today willing to share with you ideas. So I'm just looking forward to starting. So let me share my screen. I will. Can you can you see the agenda right now? Perfect. So this is what uh, we have planned for today. So we will start by self. I will introduce uh, with our program that we have at the Internet Society. Then we will have discussions, two part discussions. In total, it's uh, ten. So we have three uh, thirty thirty. Uh, wonderful Internet Society, IGF Youth Ambassadors that have been working hard for several months and they had uh, different ideas uh, that they wanted to implement. So they were working on initiatives that are going to be presented today, but not just presented. What we want is really to have a conversation, a discussion. This is a collaborative exchange. So people in the room and people online with us here in Zoom are really welcome to discuss and have comments and questions. So we will allow them to present for a while and then we will open the floor to have a discussion. So please be prepared to share your input and have a conversation. This is what we really want. And at the end, uh, we will have uh, Marisha back to uh, share some conclusion and wrap up. Uh, this is like a, some, some housekeeping rules that uh, Marisha, you could maybe uh, share in the, in, the, in the link. I don't know if you can get access to that, but uh, the code of conduct is the most important thing. We really want people to be respectful, and this is really important, so please respect that. And then for questions and answers, uh, Marisha will also explain later how we can, we can all get all the questions and answers uh, uh, in this room. I'm just checking if you can see the slides because I see myself twice. So I don't know if you're seeing my my face or the slides. So Mark? Uh, we are seeing your face and the slides. Perfect, thank you. 
Great. So let me now uh, talk a little bit about our fellowships uh, that we have. So I'm director of the fellowship programs at the Internet Society. So for several years, we've been running fellowships. And year after year, we, of course, improve, we learn from experience, and we want to have kind of like what the people want, because we have one mission, and it's uh, that the internet is for everyone. So at the Internet Society, we really work towards reaching this vision by promoting, uh, building, promoting, and defending a bigger and stronger internet. And we can't do that without having people. People is the center of everything we do. Of course, the internet is what we want to uh, build, promote, and defend, but we cannot do it without people. And specifically for these programs, we identify that we have what we call internet champions all around the world that are those that are there and they understand the multi stakeholder approach. They can advocate for our values and principles. And they are, as the, 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 the uh, ambassadors that you're going to meet today, those that are behind the development and the advancement of the internet. Because just a reminder, the internet flourished because a community of people work tireless to help it grow. Without that community of people, the internet would never have existed as we see it and we know it today. So really, if we want to keep expanding it and involving it, we need people. That's why we want to empower these people that are the internet champions we, we, we mentioned here through the skills development to become the key actors. So we want them to take action. At the end, the goal is to grow and threaten it, threatening the internet because we want to benefit the diverse, diverse populations equitably. So to achieve this, we work closely with partners. We have a list of great partners uh, from all around the world. And we develop a range of programs that are there to equip uh, these people that are going to be the internet champions we need with tools and knowledge. And at the end, we really want you to accelerate your career, make your voices heard, join a global network of internet champions and shape the future path of the internet. So we today we will see that we are gonna actually make, you are gonna make your voices heard because we're gonna hear from you, these internet champions that we have identified as IGF youth ambassadors. All of this is also to mention that we have fellowships, of course, but at the same time, we also have some courses that we call training and learning activities. They are mostly online, but now that we are going back to physical uh, events, I hope that we will have more face-to-face -face training and all of them will join a network of alumni that it's really, really important that it stays alive for years after years. So we have this group of this community of internet champions that can impact the, the internet. So at the end, our programs really, what they really want, and they've been built for that, it's to equip internet champions with the skills and knowledge, empowering them to defend a global, an open, globally connected, secure, and trustworthy internet that is for everyone. The people you are going to hear uh, uh, from uh, today are the IGF Youth Ambassadors. And what we know that they can do, thanks to the program that they've completed and their skills, is that they can make a great impact on internet governance in their different communities. That is what we expect. And thanks to the initiative that you will hear from them later, you will understand that the impact is quite clear. Of course, they are building their skills, knowledge, and connect with the network. Please help them get connected to you. If you see someone in your region, in your country, or interest in something that you are maybe working on, do not hesitate uh, to contact them and be sure that you keep in touch. Connections are really important. And of course, they will be part of this platform that we are all uh, working together, that uh, we, it's like a network where they can raise the, their voice and mobilize action on internet issues that matters. So this is what they are doing and you will see them on screen. To finalize my section today, I will just share that we have not only one program, that is the one that we are talking about today, the Youth Ambassador Program, but we also have more fellowships, the Mid-Career Fellowship and the Early Career Fellowship. I won't talk about them today, but I will share a link in chat in case you want to take a look after, because now we now need to listen fully to what our ambassadors are going to present.
with this, I will uh, hand back to uh, Mauricio, who is going to explain a little bit more how the CLX Collaborative Leadership Exchange, I'm highlighting Collaborative Leadership Exchange, is going to take place today. Um, what are going to be the topics that our IGF Youth Advisors are going to talk about. Thank you for listening and thank you for being with us today. Um, to you, Mauricio. Thank you so much, Alejandra. That was very fantastically presented. And I hope that everyone in the room are a bit more excited about the fellowships that we offer at the Internet Society. Yes, so we are kicking off the Collaborative Leadership Exchange meeting immediately. I have kicked it off for the bang. And what is really important for us to remember for today's meeting is that we will have a presenter speak. Once the presenter has uh, delivered their presentation, we would observe a six minute discussion time. That brings us back to the title of this meeting, which is called the Collaborative Leadership Exchange. So we really are advocating for and, and encouraging everyone in the room to please exchange ideas with our ambassadors, give them feedback, ask them questions. It's really about an interchange rather than a one-way communication. So we really want to encourage you to participate, participate, participate. Without further ado, um, before I introduce actually our first presenter, and tell if we're really excited, um, please know that we will have five presenters uh, going first. So it will be the presenter and then the six minute discussion. Um, each presenter will have seven minutes to present. So you'll have seven minutes to speak and, and, and deliver the idea of your initiative, followed by six minutes of exchange. Once we have gone through the first five um, uh, ambassadors of our program, we will have a five, a five minute body break so that you can be very clear. And I will indicate to you the time that we should be back um, in the room, if anyone decides to take a quick um, plot out. So it will be five presenters, five minute body break, and then we will reconvene to finish off with the five remaining presenters that are in the um, room and online today. So thank you so much again for your presence. And as they are presenting, they will also then introduce their initiative idea in the best way that they feel um, they would like to share. And in addition to that, we are also sharing the titles of the presentations on the screen for you to be able to follow along. And based on um, what you see in front of you and also who is coming up next, I'd love to introduce to you our very first group, group number one. And speaking or representing for group number one today will be Mr. Ashles Fridar. Um, the floor is yours. I'm going to share your, your PowerPoint now. Um, so that you can start off. But Ashlesh, can you open your mic so that we can hear your lovely voice? Yes, thank you, Monsha. Am I audible? Yes, you are very audible. That is fantastic. Awesome. Okay, I'm heading over to your presentation and I will start sharing. All right. Over to you. Thank you, Mauricio. And uh, hello, everyone from hello from New Delhi to those at the venue and others joining in online. Uh, I must say there is a strong sense of, as the youth calls it, FOMO, as we are missing being on site at IGF. But uh, nevertheless, glad to be here today as ISOC's IGF Youth Ambassadors for 2022. I'd like to thank the entire fellowship team at ISOC, Mauricio, Alejandra, and all the mentors for the journey over the last three months leading up to IGF. Uh, today, I'm here to present my team's initiative that we've worked on together with my incredible teammates, Elena and Avni, as well as, as, well as our mentors, Veronica, and who've helped us shape and sharpen our project. Let's get started, shall we? Uh, as the title suggests, our initiative is Beastery of Cybercrimes. And here's what it entails. Uh, can we move to the next slide? 
To put it in a single line, we are co-creating an art literacy resource, a piece three of cyber crimes in form of a zine. We were inspired by illustrated compilations of mythical beasts from Middle Ages, and we intend to use this format to talk about the modern day beasts, agents of cyber crimes. Just like any other beastry, we will be profiling each beast along with a clear and approachable description. Throughout the process, we'll interact with cybercrime experts, young internet leaders, creators throughout the through conversations, workshops, and open calls. Sounds amazing, right? But what do we get out of it? What is the objective? Next slide. Thank you. Uh, first, we intend for this beastery to be a super accessible educational asset, both in terms of distribution and the content. Starting a conversation informing the public on cyber crimes in a fun and engaging way. The zine, second, the zine will be co created with members and experts from ISOC communities, artists, young internet leaders, bringing in the aspect of co creation and community building. And third, coming to the most exciting objective for me personally, our experience throughout this process of compiling the research, interacting with the community, creating engaging, Literacy resources will be documented in form of a small how to report that shares our insight on how art can be effectively used to communicate IG issues and objectives to an audience beyond the policy circles. This is one of the main questions that got us started on this initiative. How can we leverage art for internet governance? How can we make the conversation that we are having here more accessible? Moving on to the next slide. So in short, our initiative will be focused on the creation of two main deliverables, the beast study in form of a zine and a report to document our experience. Next slide. Here's a sample render of what the structure of the beast study would look like. As our first case study, we will bring, uh, we will begin with profiling Pegasus, the infamous spyware by NSO, which targeted prominent activists, journalists, human rights defenders, politicians, Supreme Court judges, and a whole lot of people around the world. As all of us might already be aware of this, thanks to the incredible work of forbidden stories and media organizations around the world. In the beast study, we will profile different characteristics of the beast here, Pegasus, what type of cyber weapon it is, who developed it, the type of attack, the number of people affected, geographical location, we would also document some history and timelines of that. The profile would also have an experts corner section with insights and comments from cybersecurity experts aimed towards the readers. Next slide. Now let's talk about the timelines. In the next few weeks, we intend to put together the first prototype that we just discussed. Uh, we'll share it with experts for their feedback. After addressing the feedback, we'll then test the prototype with a wider audience made up of experts, civil society members on how effective the format is and how accessible the copy is. Towards the end of the year, we'll start documenting our learnings and all the challenges we faced throughout the process. In terms of the future of the initiative, over the following months, we'll put out an open call for contributions from creative researchers, artists, experts to co-create the full zine with multiple beasts, including, including more cyber attacks. By May, we intend to put out the entire set of assets, including enough and of me to join me in taking the questions. Wonderful. On that note, and thank you so much, uh, Ashlesh, for your uh, fantastic presentation and very unique indeed. Um, we will kick off with the on-site questions or comments. Uh, so 
we uh, would like to ask anyone in the room and to raise their hands if they'd like to speak. And also in this moment, I'd like to hand over to our on-site moderator, Mr. Mark Carvel, who will moderate the room and take us through any comments or questions from the on-site participants. So over to you, Mr. Mark. Thank you, Mauritia. Thank I, you, Mauritia. I, I, got a bit of echo. OK. Um, I don't see any hands raised in the room looking around. Uh, does anybody want to put a question or comment at this time following Ashles's presentation? No, I don't see any room, uh, any requests, uh, Mauritia. So back to you. Uh, along the way, while we are taking the online comments and questions, we would invite you to raise your hand. Please feel free to exchange ideas and feel free to share with the rest of the room. We do have a comment online that I'd love to share. I just want to get the name correctly, but I can't see because it's in a different language. But um, the comment there is amazing illustrations. So. I definitely echo that. Uh, and as you can hear from the room, Elena, Avni, Ashlesh, the illustrations that you have shared are absolutely fantastic. Um, I would also like to ask a question, but before I ask my question, I'll give the floor to our Director of Fellowships to share her comments, and then I will take over from there. So over to you, Ms. Alejandra. Thank you. I don't want to ask a question, but I want to say that maybe we can ask a question to the audience. So, Ashlesh, if you have a question that you would like to hear from the audience about your uh, the initiative that you're presenting with your group, that would be also a possibility. This is a conversation. So it could be that you maybe want to hear something specifically. So you can uh, use this time also to have that discussion open with a comment or a question that you would like to hear from the audience. So, and I'm saying this for everyone. Be prepared to just open a discussion with something that you would like to know from people sitting in the, at the IGF right now. Thank you. Um, Marisha, I think you had a question, so back to you. Oh, and I see also another hand. I'll give preference to Izan, and then I will follow up after. So Izan, the floor is yours. Thanks. Uh, can you hear me? Cool. Um, I just wanted to uh, congratulate Ashlesh and the rest of the team on the initiative. I think it looks really, really uh, incredible. I think it's a very good way of trying to visualize uh, a lot of the problems that we have in a way that makes it accessible. Um, and it's very, very, it has parallels to my own initiative, which we'll get to in a second. But I think the power of imagery is something that sticks for quite a long while. And so one of the questions that I had, I guess, uh, it's a bit of a a uh, facetious question, but how are you going to allocate beasts to the particular problems uh, that you identify or that you will get from this uh, this collaboration? Because you started off with Pegasus, and Pegasus obviously was the code name, and it makes it sl slightly you know a, an obvious uh, inclusion into this bestiary. But uh, for example, if there are other uh, issues out there. Let's just say we have other hacker organizations. Um, how are you going to decide what beasts are going to be, uh, you know, corresponding to those particular kinds of uh, issues? That's a question that I have, but I wanted to say it's a really good initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Idan, for your uh, for your comment and for your question. So uh, this, in terms of what's going to Nothing up in the final mystery and the shape and form it's going to take. It's going to be up to the community and communities we are going to collaborate with. So this is also an exploration in what uh, has hit uh, different communities. So what kind of cyber attacks uh, they have been victims of. Uh, so it's going to be elected by our different collaborators to choose wh which kind of incidents we're going to be focusing on. And through conversations, uh, we're going to come up with an imaginative way of representing uh, the different attacks that has a uh, connection 
to the shape and form uh, of which that the act is in. So it's, again, it's a patient, it's an ongoing and emergent process uh, that is going to take shape uh, in the upcoming months. Uh, so I hope I answered uh, your question and uh, I also would like to answer more questions if there are any questions. I'm trying to see if there's any hands. Okay, can I please ask my question? I, I don't see any questions in the chat yet, so I'm going to jump in. I'm really uh, an advocate for giving everyone access to um, credible work. And I was wondering, will this project be open source? Will it be shared at libraries as well? Um, what type of reach are you looking at? Yes, absolutely. Uh, open source is uh, open sourcing our material is one of the ways we're also hoping to reach out uh, to more and more uh, people because our uh, main target is a general audience uh, that uh, would like to know more about uh, ways and strategies to defend themselves from cyber attacks. So the publication is going to be hosted in free and open source uh, formats and websites for everyone uh, to, to download. Um, and of course, we would also like to have it published, uh, but this is uh, hopefully something that is going to be in the works uh, later on, uh, possibly next year, uh, to also distribute it to different uh, libraries. Uh, for now, our main goal is to distribute it online, as this would grant access to more and more people. Fantastic. I do have a follow-up question, but I just want to check where we are on time. Mark, are there any... Um comments or feedback from the room? And how are we doing with time? Are we able to take one more question? I, th I think Mauricio... I, th I think Mauricio... Mauricio Echo again, sorry. Uh, I think we're close to having to move on to the next to presentation. The next. But um, uh, maybe one quick question. Is there anyone in the room that has a quick question that you'd like to ask or comment before we move on? Going once, going twice. In that case, I'm going to move on swiftly to our next group of presenters. Well, actually, it's going to be one speaker, um, and she's a fantastic voice um, based in Africa. Uh, she will introduce the title of their initiative, and then I will share screen their presentation. So without further ado, and please, I also would like to just note, if you have any questions or comments that come up while we are presenting or while, um, any, while we are proceeding, please feel free to put them in the comment section. I will also be sharing a link to a Google Doc where you can post questions and comments as well, if you would prefer to do that instead. Everyone in the room on site, also feel free to interject and let us know if you have anything you would like to share in this exchange. Okay, so without further ado, I hope Ms. Thea Rose, you're in the room. Can I have your mic open and hear your lovely voice? Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. You are very, you are audible. Yes, Great. we can hear you. Great. Um, all right. Thank you all so much. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to those joining online and to all of you here. My name is Theo Rose and um, I'm presenting on behalf of um, two of my colleagues, Dijan and Shivan. They are not here, but I'm sure that I'll do justice to their presentation. Um, so our initiative is um, a measure of three different projects. Um, the title of our presentation, of course, is on digital education and online safety. Uh, Marisha, you could help me share the screen online if that works. Um, I'm going to give a little background of our initiative and um, why that is very important and why we would or I would encourage all of you to support and um, go for our project. Um, so we wanted to um, 
provide education, digital education, specifically in the um, area of encryption and cyber security. And we were focusing on younger people. Now, when we talk about younger people, um, we were looking at youth, um, specifically between the ages of 25 years and below. Um, yeah. And again, the, uh, the, the Global um, Encryption Coalition has done a wonderful job so far. And one of the emerging issues that I have noticed as a trend is that a lot of people have um, their data been um, out there in the public without they even knowing. So for example, when you give your consent to a social media platform, for example, right, if you want to open an account on Facebook, they would ask you to agree on something. How many of us here or online take time to read and really agree with that? Then again, if you do take your time to read, um, do you really have an option to say yes or no? Because if you don't agree, you don't use the platform. So most people end up saying I agree and the information is out there. Now, as a journalism lecturer teaching in a school, one of the things that I've noticed is that a lot of younger folks share personal information on social media platform. So just um, following one platform, I could know where the person lives, the person's favorite food, just within a week by, by following the trend. And so we have um, come to um, a kind of agreement that we really cannot stop people from posting information online. Really, we can't do that. But we can educate them on how to keep those information secure. And what is a better way of doing that than having a color book and then, I mean, having fun and learning at the same time. So now what my colleague Shivan is doing is to actually create a platform, right? Um, Shivan is based in Europe. So she would want to create a platform um, where um, uh, we are going to host courses on cybersecurity, internet governance, um, and, and all that. The courses are free. The, the website is already running. It's, it's ongoing. We have 100 plus courses on those platforms. It's free of charge. You don't need to pay for that. Um, it's also going to be self-created. So um, we are going to have people, we are going to be reaching out to people to create um, content or lesson notes, sort of, and putting out there to educate. Now, um, on the same platform, I am going to create an encryption color book um, to, together with all of us here. Of course, I'm, I'll be reaching out for images as well. But um, this is how the encryption color book is going to run. It's going to be a 25-page color book. Um, I have sample of how the, the, the page should look. So Marcia will show. Again, I'll need your vote on which of the pages are very colorful to you to do that. Um, on each of the page, right, 25, so on each of the page, we are going to have um, an image of an encryption advocate. Um, I intend to work with the Global Encryption, uh, encryption Coalition, sorry, to um, find out or source out those 25 advocates. Um, we are going to have, so that's an image, um, a sample image of one, and then the other one could look um, to, to show that. Now I'm going to ask each um, I'm going to ask um, each advocate to give us a quote or a lesson on an encryption in its simplest form. Because in, in my piloting, one of the things that I have learned is that some of the encryption terms are so technical that people don't really understand. And because of that, they are not really interested in learning on that. So we are going to make it more simpler, more easier to understand. Um, so what you see on the page is a sample of how the color book is going to be like. It will be virtual, so you could color it virtually. And we, um, I also intend to print it out if possible, but for now, um, from next year, it's going to run virtually with that. Then my third colleague, um, Dijan, it's, uh, is going to take our resources um, onto the field. Um, Dijan is in Africa. Um, sorry, I can't pinpoint the country specifically. But um, his initiative is to now take the materials that we've, we've developed, the advocacy work, into senior high schools and um, tertiary institutions. Um, he intends to organize um, 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 how the workshops and trainings on cybersecurity and Christian and all that. So this is Putting it all together, it blends because then you have um, a hard copy material that could be hosted on a website that is free, easy to be accessed. And at the same time, we are not just living it online, that we are moving from institutions and to tell them about the available material and how they can use that. Now, in terms of its importance, we all know virtually, and there are a lot of sessions on encryption, cybersecurity. We keep talking about it all the time, how important it is. Wouldn't you want your child to actually be safe online without necessarily having to be 
be on them most of us are here we have our what's at home we don't know what they are watching we don't know what they are reading we can't even moderate their content online wouldn't you want to give them that education so that when you're out of the house you are more comfortable that at least they kind of know how to serve on the internet so that is relevant um, in terms of implementation um, as I mentioned earlier the website is already up going um, early part of next year that's 2023 between January to March um, we would you can fully now go and take your online courses the color book should be ready at the latter end of the year um, and um, of course that the trainings would the, the the cohort trainings are starting from April all the way going down so this is what our initiatives are um, I'm open to questions and more clarification and of course input if there is any so this is a sample of the website that I mentioned and some of the courses that I said they are free of charge and again um, they are content that are internally generated and there are some that we would outsource to um, experts in those areas to work on thank you so much for uh, thank you so much Theo Rose for sharing um, we already have a question from the online audience, but as per our process, I'm going to allow those on site uh, to feel a bit more included and go first. So, Mr. Mark Carvel, over to you again. Are there anyone um, wanting to contribute in the room? Okay. Uh, thank okay. You. Thank you, Mike Russia. Um, I don't see any hands raised, but uh, well, oh, sorry. Oh, down the far end. Okay. Please uh, introduce yourself and, uh, and fire away with your question. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Marian Benaisa from uh, ISAC Tunisia. Um, I just wanted to thank Rose for the interesting project. Um, I have one question. Well, she mentioned um, that uh, there's people who's, who are going to contribute in this book. They can add contact, content to the book. Um, I just wanted to learn more. Who are these people? Are there certain criteria? Are there experts or people you are going to reach to? And how do you control or, or evaluate the contact that's going to be in the book? Is there certain criteria or, uh, I don't know, um, selection criteria for the content that you want to be in the book? Thank you so much. Okay. So I, I can go right. Um, okay, so in terms of um, content moderation or what sort of content they are going to be in there, um, I mentioned earlier that I'm going to collaborate with the um, Global Encryption Coalition from the Internet Society um, so that we kind of censor the information. Of course, I want people to be educated, but I want the, the correct and the right information in there. Um, so um, at, at ISOC, we have people that teaches encryption as a course. Um, in terms of the technical knowledge, for example, what encryption is, the types of encryption, um, that um, I would want um, experts in those areas. However, the book is going to have quotes as well. So if you remember or you were following in the coalition, they reach out to you individuals to send code of how encryption has empowered your life. Yes, yeah, so we are going to have that. So I'm just going to do a little demonstration. Let's assume that this is the color book on the on, on the side, right hand side or left. We are going to have an image. So for example, if you want to contribute to it, you are going to send me an image or an email image. We are going to do a cartoon version of your image, which is colorable by it. We are going to have an expert knowledge on what encryption is. So for example, encryption is A, B, and C here. Then we have your code by it because you are not an expert in that area. But if you are an expert in that area, it's your image plus um, the, the lesson. Now, I don't want to restrict it, so we are going to open up the floor, um, I mean, call for participant in twofold, expert and people who would want to share quotes. Um, again, I, we would want a quote that is relevant and important. I keep sharing this example that before I get to know much about encryption, I used to share my password with everybody, first of all, because I don't want to forget and that when I'm not with my phone and I need to go into my email, I could just call a friend to check my email for me. But then I realized that that was actually the wrong thing because my password is all over the place. Uh, I could save my bank pin on my, my mobile phone and I could leave my phone with anybody and they all have it. That's a bad
important and it's something that everybody could relate with because we do that a lot. So such code is important. So again, um, we would censor the code to see how relevant it is. But once the first um, production is gone and is good, we would have continual code so we could have more people in, in the system. Yeah. Okay, thank so, you. Thank you, Teo Rose. We're, we're quite tight on the time available right. for discussion. I know it's a very uh, useful full, full explanation and ex uh, exemplification, so that's very helpful. Mark. I th as we're so tight on time, we'd better go back to Mauricia for uh, Mark. online. Mark. 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 Oh, sorry. Hello, Mark, yeah. Okay, just uh, very quick, very okay. quick. All right, thank you, Tiros, very much for the presentation. I give you Tambazada. My name is Sobi Abraham from Ghana. I'm also part of the Youth Ambassador. Um, I want to um, see the fantastic job being done here. Um, in terms of the website, we have various juridic jurisdiction in terms of language barrier. How are we going to ensure that um, people from different regions come? In terms of language translation, do we have that feature in it whereby, if not, you can include it so that people who can speak French can learn the actual language on themselves, people who can speak Hindi or maybe other languages, you can factor that into it so that it can translate. They will understand well on their home language other than English. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. Um, I'll, no, we, we do have some languages. We have um, Portu um, Portuguese, French, and English, but I um, mean, we would incorporate that in more things. All right, thank you. Okay, thanks very much. That's a very important point uh, on mon multilingualism. Thank you for that. So, Mauricia, back to you for uh, any quick uh, online uh, questions. Thank you. Much, much Mark. Uh, yes, we are um, very aware of time. So, please. Please be direct with your question and also any, and this is for everyone, um, when you are uh, providing feedback or um, you're answering a question, please also try and do it in the most succinct manner as possible. Um, I can't see the name, but it does say Ghana Viewing Hub. So the person from Ghana that would like to share, your hand is up and you now have the floor. Hello, um, Marisha, I hope I can be here. This is Shadrach, um, joining virtually Hi, from... We can yeah, hear from, you, Yeah, sure. So I'm at the Ghana uh, V Hub. Yeah, so with uh, regards to um, Chiros and uh, her team's uh, project, I would like to know, yeah, um, she mentioned that um, um, uh, copies of her book, their book will be shared to schools. So like, um, how... How how is it uh, like? How are they going to work that uh, ensure um, schools better understands like cyber security issues, like encryption issues? Because um, nowadays you, um, a lot of uh, students know a lot of stuff on social media, but then how would they ensure that um, these students really understands um, encryption, uh, be able to protect themselves online without? Um, um, sharing their passwords with the other colleagues, and then by the end they realize um, their data is being uh, um, um, being shared online without their knowledge. So that is what I want to know. How would it um, let the uh, uh, students really understand the encryption concepts? Thank you. Um, okay, so. Um in terms of understanding, I did mention that, right, that we would try or we are trying to break down the technical words um, to make it more simpler, right, to make it in a basic form for people to understand. Then in terms of education and sharing, um, we've, again, doing our pilot stage, we've actually identified some institutions that do teach cyber security. So we are hoping to reach out to um, those institutions to see if we could collaborate with some of the lecturers to include that in their teaching schedule and all that. And again, if you were following what um, um, my third colleague is, is going to do, Dijan, is to actually move from secondary schools and tertiary institutions, organizing boot camps and training sessions. I must say that, I mean, the, country, the, the world is big. We cannot reach anywhere. But we are hoping to leverage on the various resources that we have um, to do that. And for those who would want to assist, uh, my email is down there, Theo, early 31. You could reach out to me, and we would pick up from there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Theros, for your response. Quick uh, one from you, Izan, and then we do need to move on. Thank you, Marisha, and thank you, Theros, and, and the rest of the team for 
a really, really interesting presentation. I just had a very quick uh, sort of comment. So usually when we're talking about encryption, uh, we have uh, parties that we refer to. Um, so you have the story of Alice and Bob who are trying to communicate with each other, and you have Eve, who's the eavesdropper, trying to listen into their communications. And so I think that that trope and that story of Alice and Bob really hasn't been told in a, in a story form or a narrative form, I think, since John Gordon in 1984. And so I, I think it would be a very interesting thing to probably add uh, to your coloring book to make the story of Alice and Bob come to life. And it's something that will be very appealing, I feel, uh, to people of the younger generation as well, uh, when you have the story of encryption being told in that sort of way. So I think it's a very, very interesting idea because the sooner that people are exposed to the need to have privacy and encryption and to do so in a way using characters that we've already built for this purpose, like Alice and Bob, I think that would be a very big synergy and I look forward to seeing this project uh, to completion. Thank you. Thank you. I think if there's no uh, comments further from Thea Rose, she would have opened her mic if she wanted to say something. Um, let us move swiftly along. Thank you so much, Izan, for your fantastic contribution. Um, let's let that be the encouragement to everyone in the room to keep the engagement going and to keep the questions and comments coming. Without further ado, we would like to hand over to our next presenting group and representing group number three would be Miss Christine Kim. Uh, Miss Christine, if you are in the room, can we hear your lovely voice? Hello. Yes, I, I would need you to speak a little bit louder or adjust your volume because you sound a bit faint. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, still a bit far. I think you might need to move a bit closer to your microphone. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. So I'm going to share your presentation slides now. And we will be back. Okay, thanks, Marisha. Hi from Washington, DC. I'm very excited to be with you all today. My name is Christine, and I've been working with my colleague Lucy on our initiative, which is on examining privacy laws in Africa in the wake of AI and emerging technologies. Uh, next slide, please. So these are our bios that would be available on our um, initiative which is a blog. Lucy and I both work in the legal sector, so our approach will focus more on laws and policies. Um, next slide, please. So our broader goal is to more widely inform the general public about privacy issues in Africa that are caused or impacted by AI and other emerging technologies, such as the metaverse, uh, blockchain, and e-government processes. So we will write a series of blog posts, each dedicated to a privacy issue across African countries. And we plan to draw from news articles, scholarly sources, policy rationales, and interviews to assess the privacy laws in these African countries and whether they provide protections for vulnerable minorities. And then we plan to propose solutions inspired by approaches used by local communities, and as well as other um, different countries that present long-term potential for privacy protection. So the purpose of our initiative is to review um, the data protection, privacy, and AI laws in African countries, and to also look into evolving privacy concerns for minorities, um, such as children, persons with disability, and women, um, next slide, please. So we've identified four objectives for this initiative. We'll be analyzing the laws um, of concerning data protection, privacy, and AI in African countries, and considering whether they address the social cultural context of the continent so that we can offer feasible solutions. We'll be identifying privacy risks in, in these countries, including rights of vulnerable groups and, and gender concerns. Um, we'll also be providing uh, policy recommendations, not um, restricted only to AI, but uh, this includes um, other emerging technologies so that we can uh, help minimize privacy risks. And uh, fourth, we will conduct comparative studies across different governments and their approaches to um, governing data, privacy, and AI. Uh, so this initiative will 
involve conducting, you know, a deep dive analysis of these laws in Africa and determining whether the approach is taken and um, and whether the same addresses privacy concerns in the continent. Uh, the, the research will result in a provision of recommendations and approaches that can be adopted to address um, the concerns that we'll outline. And we'll also plan to uh, monitor engagement uh, metrics that are made available by, the, available by the blog's platform. So how many views, comments, and likes we received um, based on the post. Uh, also that we can determine whether this information is helpful, interesting, and relevant to the general public. And we plan to tailor some posts towards parents or lawmakers. So a post, for example, on children's privacy um, and African laws governing this will be written with uh, parents and caretakers in mind so that they're better able to understand how their child is impacted. Next slide, please. So we're still working on a title for a blog post publication, um, so, but this is a short introduction of uh, what we'll be posting as on the website. Um, and I wanted to share an example of a blog post topic that we've been brainstorming. So in January 2020, um, Kenya's high court blocked an e-government initiative that aimed to collect citizen biometric data. And the high court made this decision um, due to a lack of adequate data protection laws, um, you know, in addition to Kenya's Data Protection Act, which doesn't specifically regulate technologies like facial recognition technology. So in our blog post, we write about this topic and provide modern day policy recommendations. Next slide, please. So we would love suggestions and any comments that you might have. And thank you for um, allowing us to present this. Well, thank you, Christine and uh, Marisha. I'm looking around the room. Yes, I see a hand up. Please introduce yourself and, uh, and provide your question. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Katerina, and I'm also one of the participants of this year's uh, Youth Ambassador Program. And I would like to thank you for this amazing uh, initiative. But could you please tell us more maybe on some sort of example that in your blog you will identify that some law is not addressing some issues especially related to the vulnerable groups what kind of recommendations can you suggest thank you very much thank you Katerina, for that question my name is Disney and I'm part of the idea of the ambassador when it comes to me for example, one of the issues of interest is and most of African water protection laws are not gender specific. They generalize. They seem to make um, issues with gender to be on its own. So, um, for example, for gender, there are issues that are concerned that um, women have a gender diversity by people of students, but in online and also when there are implications that are not addressed in. So, for example, in one point of restoration of the kids, such as Mario, would be able to advise the next person to be able to look into this issue that we are going to raise in our blog post and to make sure or expand their policies to cover these issues concerning gender and not just generalize these issues into one of Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Are there any more questions or quick comments in the room? Yeah, one, one, if you could keep it quick, so we've got to keep on time. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Yep Stramersha, and I'm from Ethiopia. I just want to make sure that uh, all the new technologies, the, all the new emerging technologies, such as machine learning, AI, and other algor algorithms are dependent on the data they are gathering. I just want to ask how you are planning to make sure that uh, the policies we are raising uh, here in Africa don't come uh, again as to this, uh, the development of these technologies. Okay, who, who'd like to respond to that? Um, I will respond to it, Mark. Thank you. Um, so our, our recommendation will be, it will not be to curb development. We are aware that AI and other emerging technologies are not here to harm us. 
we're more here to bring development and solve some of the challenges that we are facing as African, you know. So our solution and our recommendations will be best to ensure that while we we embrace these technologies, while we accept them in our continent and the globe at large, that at the same time developers and companies that bring along these um, developments and technologies are well aware that child protection is the key issue that should be addressed. And that to ensure that privacy is also a concern that when they're developing these technologies, they have it in mind and like having to come back and resolve this issue later on when it is already a big concern and a challenge. Okay, thank you, Lucy. Uh, I think I'm going to hand back to Mauricia now for uh, any uh, online uh, comments and questions. Mauricia. That sounds good. Um, I have asked in the comment section here if there are any questions or comments from the online audience. We have not seen any comments or questions as yet. I would love to congratulate you ladies on a fantastic initiative and just give you the advice um, of making your blog as colorful and attractive as possible, especially since um, you know how they say people eat with their eyes, meaning before you even consume a plate of food, what is on the plate and the way it looks is what attracts you to it. So please make sure that either if you need to get an illustrator friend in, make your blog catching to the eye. And also if you can research the meanings behind colors um, in marketing, it will really assist you also in being intentional with the colors that you use on your blog so that you also communicate the message through the coloring um, that you intend to do through your initiative itself. So that is just another platform to also communicate your intent. All right. On that note, um, I would like to move on swiftly to our next presenters. And they are, um, well, actually, it's going to be one of them speaking. Um, his name is Isma. And we've seen him a couple of times um, earlier in the session. So without further ado, Izan, if you can open your microphone and get ready, I'm about to share your presentation. And the floor is yours. Thank you, Marisha. Uh, I just want to confirm that everyone can uh, hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Wonderful. Um, so thank you, uh, Marisha, and thank you to the Internet Society. And uh, it's really difficult uh, coming after a lot of really interesting presentations. Um, but, you know, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity to present uh, what effectively is uh, two initiatives that have been effectively merged because they center around the same theme of internet fragmentation. Uh, internet fragmentation and digital sovereignty has essentially been the cause celebre of the internet community uh, in the past couple of years, uh, primarily because of the fact that it uh, goes against the very grain of what the internet is meant to be, which is meant to be this open, interoperable network where everyone can sort of manifest their digital freedoms. And so there are two ways that myself, as well as one of my colleagues, uh, Megan, who I believe is also present over here, have decided to tackle this problem. So what I will do is I will present both of the initiatives uh, in sequence and then talk about the synergies uh, that result from both of them. And following on from what Marisha said about feasting with the eyes, uh, my initiative is titled Visualizing the Splinternet, which is meant to be a data visualization project and an open source collaborative research tool uh, for academics, policymakers, researchers, and so on. Uh, to be able to showcase the current state of internet fragmentation and digital sovereignty that takes place at a global level, as well as having an underlying database that people can contribute to uh, that shows what the effects of different laws and initiatives are, and also contains a methodology to quantify those effects in terms of how much fragmentary potential they have. Uh, the reason I wanted to do this is there are many, many initiatives that are coming out from established institutions. For example, we have the Policy Network on Internet Fragmentation at the IGF, uh, a presentation of which will be held tomorrow, I believe. Uh, we have the Internet Society's uh, current consultation, I think that recently ended, uh, on the issue of digital sovereignty. And so I felt that there was a need to have a tool that could allow individuals to not only contribute so that we could have a global view, but also to be able to very quickly understand the impact of these initiatives and visual level. So looking at things like maps, charts, and so on. If we move to the next slide, please. 
So based on the policy network on internet fragmentation, as well as other initiatives that have come out, I decided to tackle the issue of internet fragmentation in two ways, looking at what I perceive to be the internet layer, which is the technical infrastructure surrounding the internet, and the application layer. And I've decided to do this using six different topics uh, for which uh, areas could possibly be fragmented so that we could get more researchers come in for different specialisms so that they can contribute to whether a particular law or rule or new uh, policy proposal for a specific area that they might be uh, an expert in, how much that might contribute to fragmentation. So as you can see, and these are again, open for discussion, and I'm very happy to hear your views on this, but these follow along the topics of infrastructure and connectivity. So we're looking at things like uh, shutdowns, we're looking at accessibility, uh, then we're also looking at technical standards and issues. So we're looking at things potentially like new IP or IPv6 or any new potential proposals that might come out of the ITU in terms of trying to regulate the standards behind the internet. Uh, and then following on from that, we have the application layer. So we have things like speech and misinformation and what fragmentary potential local laws might have. Uh, we have the digital economy. So we have things like the Digital Services Act and the Digital Markets Act that came out from the EU very recently. We have privacy and data protection, which naturally might lead to things like data localization. And we have online harms and safety rules, for example, dealing with child exploitation content. And so in terms of the deliverables, I intend to have a GitHub repository that contains the project data for for all of these uh, visualizations that I intend to create and have a working paper to describe the methodology of how we want to evaluate how fragmentary each of these potential proposals might be. And then a web page that showcases all of these so you have charts and graphs and so on. Can we move to the next slide, please? So there are challenges and opportunities to this, and I'm not going to be backing away from them. Uh, the first thing, and the reason I wanted to present this to the IGF, is because we want to build a motivated and sustainable community to keep this project going, given that sometimes it can be very hard for open source projects to maintain that momentum. And so hopefully, we want to be able to introduce this to a bunch of different organizations and uh, initiatives to see if there's any potential for collaboration and for research, given the utility of this tool for policymaking and for for advocacy for uh, having a, a, a united internet. Uh, there are also potential overlaps with other initiatives. So for example, by my understanding, Freedom on the Net has uh, also very, very similar criterion for evaluating fragmentation, uh, but they're much more broadly focused on the state of digital rights overall. We move to the next slide, sorry. And I also want to present uh, Megan's paper. Um, she intends to uh, research the uh, internet fragmentation and digital sovereignty issues uh, in Africa. Uh, could we move to the next slide, please? And I think it's a very important thing that she's doing where there's a lot of synergy with things that I'm trying to do. And she's going to form, in many respects, the foundation for the research that I'm also going to be doing and for many other researchers as well. Because internet fragmentation and digital sovereignty issues have often been pitted as a Western versus Chinese internet model issue, where you have things like freedom and the desire to have multi-stakeholder models versus more multilateral models and focuses on more control over network flows. Um, and there is a term for all of the countries that haven't really fallen into one of those categories called digital deciders, and most of them happen to be in Africa. And I think this is a very important piece of scholarship that Megan will be contributing to, to understand how African countries will be understanding the issue of internet fragmentation and digital sovereignty, and looking at multi their multilateral objectives within the broader scope of uh, internet governance. And she intends to use the Internet Society's tools, such as the Internet Way of Networking and Internet Impact Assessments, to identify the impacts of those initiatives. And her deliverable will be a research paper output, but I have no doubt that this will lead to further collaboration between myself and her in the future. And I believe she is also there uh, present in uh, today's meeting. So hopefully there should be uh, a, a chance for her to address any specific questions related to her initiative as well. And I look forward to all of your questions as well. Thank you so much for the time. Exquisitely presented, Izan. Thank you so much for that. Without further ado, Mr. Mark Carvel, any questions or comments from the on-site participants? Okay, Marissa. Thanks, uh, Izan. That's a, such a hugely relevant uh, high-profile issue now uh, that your uh, initiative is uh, relating to. I'm looking around the room. 
for reactions, questions? Anybody want to raise their hand? Oh, yeah, please, yes, on the, on the left there. Thank you. Thank you once again for giving me the floor. I would like to share my appreciation of this uh, initiative, and I see that it's really comprehensive approach that is based on the uh, like scientific research, but it wants to make it accessible for the bigger audience. And indeed, there is a challenge of overlapping with other initiatives. But at the same time, I would like to uh, point out that if you are focusing on the policy uh, discussions and on the uh, policy making in the area and governmental driven like uh, fragmentation, we also should take into account that uh, sometimes the fragmentation is driven by the private companies. And it's interesting whether you are going to take that um, into account in some way in, in this initiative or you are focusing only on the like digital sovereignty and states. Thank you. Um, that's a very interesting question. Thank you so much for posing it. Um, most of the time, uh, in my opinion, uh, the mandated kinds of fragmentation that exist are driven by public sector and governmental and intergovernmental initiatives. So that's something I haven't really taken into account for this project. And also, because visualizing it and collecting the data for those kinds of initiatives can be quite difficult, given that they are very subjective and their effects can be felt in very different ways, as opposed to things that can be objectively measurable, like looking at laws and looking at things that that are proposed and calculating them and counting them. It is very important to note, and I definitely agree, that the private sector can also be a very big source of internet fragmentation. But uh, from my understanding, the nature of my approach would be looking at it from a top-down perspective rather than something that's bottom-up. It's driven by the initiatives of private sector entities of their own accord, as opposed to something that's mandated on them. Uh, I'll leave it to Megan to also answer that question because I'm not sure whether that's something that she's also introducing in her research paper or not, but I definitely appreciate the question. And if you believe that there is a way for us to include that within the scope of what we're trying to do, then by all means, please reach out to us. And I appreciate the question. Thank you. Thank you, Zain and Katrina for the question. Just as Zain had mentioned, I had not considered the perspective of private companies be having an impact on on internet fragmentation, but it is something that I will definitely consider in my research output. And in Africa, I think it's an it's an element that needs to be considered skills perhaps from Chinese entities which are supporting difficult digital infrastructure. Perhaps there is definitely an input that I've considered in in in, in Internet in the in the discussion of internet fragmentation in Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Uh, any more final quick question from the room or comment? I don't see any hands. Okay, uh, Mauricia. Oh, one quick question. Sorry, just slipped in there. Okay, please go ahead. Introduce yourself and, and uh, please please be uh, short. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, I'm a friend from. Uh, Ethiopia Information Science and uh, Internet uh, Security, <coughs> INSA. Mine is about conceptual clarity uh, to capture the essence. What does it mean by that? Internet multilateralism. I think it, is, uh, it has some intermingling with social science concepts and uh, it is uh, the uh, internet governance aspect. So uh, would you brief a little bit about it, please? Thank you. Sorry, sorry, I'm not sure if I uh, fully caught the question. Are you talking about multilateralism? Yes, of course. Yes, so multilateralism uh, would be intergovernmental objectives where you don't have other stakeholders uh, involved in the decision-making process that has had a top-down approach on the fragmentary potential. I agree that there's a lot of um, different ways to interpret the issue. 
Um, and there are different terminologies that are often thrown around. So point of this uh, collaborative leadership exchange was to understand and to gain insights from yourselves um, to think about how we can more clearly and conceptually define all of these terms. Uh, and I think uh, we intend to definitely capture initiatives in international organizations. Uh, so things like the ITU and things like the UN more generally that do have an impact on the fragmentation of the internet and whether they give any credence to nations uh, having more control over internet infrastructure or the user experience of the internet in their regions that might affect the overall openness of the internet. Uh, so multilateralism in our understanding of the term is focusing on those sorts of initiatives. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Izan. I think that was a very uh, comprehensive and uh, 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 informative response. Thanks. So, uh, Mauricia, back to you, I think, for online uh, reactions and questions. Thank you so much, Mark. I really appreciate that. Um, I have asked in the comment section if there are any questions or uh, feedback points from the online audience. Um, as till now, I've not received any just yet. Um, but once again, Izan and Megan, fantastic, fantastic work that you have put forward. And to echo um, what Mr. Mark Ravel earlier um, shared when you were done presenting, Izan, is the relevance of your initiative in this time. Please, um, as you have started your collaboration with the Internet Society, I would encourage you to continue to leverage on this um, resource. It will really help you with the visibility of your initiative and also ensure that it is sustainable in the years to come because I do foresee it um, expanding uh, quite a bit. So I would love for you to continue staying on the mark and let it not, um, I would love to see this being the first research output of many from the two of you. And um, as your collaboration continues, I do wish you the best and may it flourish and may more scholars, more people at ground level continue to hear about your work as well. Fantastic, fantastic presentation. Well done. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Marisha. And uh, I appreciate everyone's uh, comments and questions on this. And by all means, this is a collaborative project. So please feel free to reach out to myself as well as to Megan, because the success of this project is very heavily dependent on all of your contributions. So thank you. Perfectly said. On that wonderful note, I would love to also keep this exchange going. We have one more team presenting before we go on our five minute body break. And without further ado, Mr. Ochieng, if you are able to open your mic, we would love to hear your amazing voice. Maybe your audio is just taking a bit of time to load or to come up, but we cannot, we can see you, but we cannot hear you yet. Um, not yet. Um, Marisha, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. I think. Interesting. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Uh, as Marisha stated, my name is Ochiang. I'm from Kenya. And, uh, our initiative is uh, in collaboration with you know, a good friend of mine called Cynthia. And I will just first take a moment to uh, pass my regards and uh, appreciation to our mentors. Uh, that is Ambrel King and uh, Toko Mia for wonderful contribution towards our project. So this initiative project is, um, is a merger of two initiative projects, one from myself and the other from Cynthia. Uh, basically, my initiative project was, uh, which formed the, the, the entirety of our project, was in proclaiming the promise of the internet, basically, which was assessing um, the various uh, components of the internet, uh, various components of the thematic areas of the internet governance, which was basically on the access to internet and the necessary infrastructure, investment in digital content, inclusive decision making, that is a multi-stakeholder approach, and then putting people at the hand of the agenda, which was looking at the 
freedom of expression, privacy, and data protection and security, which basically was looking at the various rights that, you know, as we know now, uh, the internet has turned out to be a life, um, it has turned out to be the heartbeat of the digital economy. And for that, as much as we're talking about accessibility to everyone on the internet, we must ensure that we put people at the heart of the agenda, just as a creator had suggested. Then further, I was looking at the future of the internet. While at uh, Cynthia's project, she was basically looking at the indigenous people's rights to dig digital inclusivity in digital economies. So we marked the two uh, initiative projects and we came up with one uh, initiative project, which is um, now enhancing um, internet governance in Kenya and Africa change, and of course, the world at large. So basically, the, we know that the internet has become the heart of the digital economy, and it is and that it is a, it's not only a tool of communication, but it has become uh, part of our daily lives, lifestyle, a necessity, and a basic human right. So that to ensure open, safe, and free internet accessibility, just like water and, uh, and electricity, internet not only needs to be protected, but we also need to ensure that we promote the digital uh, divide among us various communities in our localities. So our, our project will be based on a research paper that will be looking at accessing, accessing um, various, uh, various uh, community networks to ensure that we have connectivity and uh, looking at, because we noted that uh, in Kenya mostly, connectivity to the internet is basically among those people who are living at uh, urban areas. So for us, we're focusing our energies towards assessing how and the power of community networks in ensuring that there is there is internet connectivity to these persons who are marginalized in the country and Africa at large. We'll also be looking at inclusivity, the public participation. We're looking at a multi-stakeholder approach of internet governance. How does various, uh, various stakeholders play in ensuring that these marginalized communities are able to access internet and uh, be able to voice themselves out and have a digital path, which is also protected by ensuring that, which now brings me to the next purpose of the of the, the initiative project, which will be looking at digital rights, digital literacy, and ensuring that we promote content creation and e-commerce for these marginalized persons and communities. And as stated earlier, the project will be focusing people at the center by by, by by ensuring that we protect digital rights, freedom of expression, freedom of speech, and also ensuring that there is always security, as much as we are pushing for connectivity uh, that is free, safe, and, and open to everyone, we're also ensuring that your data, as you left, as you leave your digital prints online, we ensure that your, that your, your data is secure and uh, away from any sort of a security breach. In that, our main focus will be will be assessing some of the some of the community networks in Kenya and uh, think tanks in the country, such as Kiktanet, Tunapentanet, and Aherinet. The next slide, please, Mauricia. Finally, as uh, as stated, the 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 initiative project is about are starting the conversation in ensuring that we proclaim that very promise that the internet has given us, the promise of connectivity to everyone, connection that is open, safe, and, uh, and, 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 and that calls for inclusivity to everyone, not only those who are in urban areas, but everyone, no matter the place that you are. So in that, the, the, the project, the initiative project will be based on a research paper, that we'll be looking at those various thematic areas, and in the end, we shall be reporting the we shall be reporting the research paper, or rather publishing the research paper in a way that will now have a conversation that will be we discuss in a symposium that will be held later on after the research has come to life, and the symposium will now 
be bringing all those thematic areas into life and having a conversation, having a discussion that will ensure that we keep on promoting the internet, governing the internet for a safer and clear space for everyone. And with that, I yield the remaining time and, uh, and call for any questions, any comments and uh, suggestions from the, from the members. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ocheng. That was very well presented. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Mark Carvel. Any on-site questions or comments? Thank you, Marisha. Thank you, Ocheng. That was a very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I'm looking around the room for any raised hands, questions, comments, feedback. No? I think they're all anxious to go for the break, actually, <laughs> but... Uh, Okay. Uh, all right. Um, Marisha, I don't see any raised hands here. Um, online, maybe? Online, we do not have any questions yet, but we do have quite a few comments in the, in the comment section. Lots of congratulations coming through um, for the amazing presentations, for you, Ocheng, for the teams that have gone before you as well. Um, then, yes, Fred also said, great presentations so far from all of your ambassadors. Uh, actually, he's also a former uh, ambassador himself. Uh, again, some more from Omar as well. Great presentations to you all. So lots of, lots of congratulatory wishes and, and, and sentiments coming from the online audience, that is for sure. I just have one quick question for you, Ocheng. Um, yep. You mentioned that, I know that you will have a research output, right? But um, yes. you mentioned that you would be advocating for sharing of um, digital literacy content. And I would imagine that um, when you do uh, encourage this, that there will be uh, content creators approaching you and Cynthia to share their content. And do you have a contingency plan around this? Um, have you maybe established any collaborations? Uh, what is what is your plan for those uh, types of feedbacks that could come your way? Um, as I said, we'll be basically assessing some sort of uh, think tanks in the country and community networks in the country. And so in terms of contingency and where to get the content, these community networks and think tanks that have really, let me talk about Kitanet, which is Kenya ICT network, um, uh, network, which is a through this, through this, um, sorry, through this uh, think tank, Kiktanet, I was able now to start my journey for the Internet Governance Ambassador, which eventually led me to here. So I think through assessing such, 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 uh, such think tanks and uh, community networks, that is where we'll be able to be getting this, um, this uh, content because the community networks work with people work with people on the on the ground. And so for us, it will be a platform to, you know, pursue the same. I hear your feedback, I acknowledge it. Uh, thank you so much for uh, giving me uh, your answer. Um, but I was also wondering uh, for your lay content creators, not your official, because I know Kitanet is an official body, but I'm, I'm thinking of your content creator on the street. Uh, if they come to you and they say, well, I've created some content on digital literacy and I'm looking for visibility on this. And I see that you're, uh, you're, you're advocating and encouraging for the creation of, of my content. Can you connect me? Do you have a system in place to assist these kind of voices coming to you from your community? Now, for now, we do not have maybe the same can just come out through the research paper and uh, as, a, as, as a way maybe maybe also through during the symposium be able to you know voice those you know those content and um yeah okay, that 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 is that does, thank you no that question. does answer my question don't worry <laughs> i'm not yet to grill you um, but thank you so much for, for your response. Um, and on that note, I will not keep anyone in the room or on site uh, any longer. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Cheng, for your presentation. We are ready for that much needed body break.
um, Mr. Tracy Hackshaw is saying in the comments, though, that I just want to bring some attention to, that um, this was very thoughtful and well-researched. Um, this is to everyone who have presented thus far. And he would just like to also share his sentiments of congratulations to each and every one of you have presented. And I'm sure the presentations to come will not disappoint because we know that we have quality in the room. Without further ado, please uh, feel free to take your body break. We will be taking a break for the next five minutes. Stretch your legs, get yourself refreshed. Um, I would like to give you the time, but since we are all in different time zones, I'll just say please calculate five minutes from now and kindly be back in the room. See you in five. Yeah, so those in the room, that means, what, 23 minutes to four, I reckon. Thank you.
Hello everyone, we should be ready to get back in the part of the series. Um, for those on site, Mr. Mark, are we ready to, to kick off the second half? Please give me an indication. Uh, there's a lot of empty seats here. 
Uh, I'll see if I can grab people from just outside the door if they're chatting. Okay. Well, oh, you're still muted, so sorry. We can't hear you. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Well, I will have the echo. It. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Oh, okay. Yeah, there are a lot of empty seats here, particularly on one side. Actually, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where they are. Maybe uh, they're outside. I'll just quickly shout. We're starting again. Okay, and come back in. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Oh, Marissa, I'm back. I've broadcast the message. <laughs> Hopefully it'll uh, attract people back into the room. Uh, a few people are coming back in. So I think, yeah, you could probably start in the next minute or so, actually. Um, but they've got the message we're starting. Okay. Thank you so much. As we gear up to get started, I just want to check with Aravik, uh, is everything all right? Is your mic working? Hello, hello. Uh, let's test your mic. Do you, you hear me? Hello? Currently muted. Is it okay? Do you hear me? I can hear you now. Um, let me just see if it's your volume or mine. Do you mind speaking one more time? Hello. Yes, perfect. Thank you. No, it was Thank my you. volume. Fantastic. Okay, I'm getting your presentation ready. And uh, as soon as you see the screen pop up, you can get started, really. Um, and then as Mr. Mark is busy getting everybody back in the room, everyone can also just relax back in. But in the spirit of keeping time, uh, we'll, we're going to move along swiftly <laughs> and uh, involve everyone as they come. All right, Aravik, we wish you all the best for your presentation. I will share my screen shortly. I hope you can see my screen. I'm about to present. All right, can I have an indication if my screen is, um, is showing? Can you see the presentation? Uh, yes, it's okay. Okay, perfect. In that case, the floor is yours, Arvik. All the best. Enjoy. Oh, thank you very much. So, 
the Internet Society team, the EJF participant. First of all, I would like to welcome you and thank you for the opportunity to present my project. Sorry for my voice, I have some problems, I will try to do my best. So, uh, let me introduce briefly myself. I am Arivik Martirasyan, a researcher at the Diplomatic Academy of the Russian Foreign Ministry, head of the Youth Educational and Scientific Project International Information Security School, and this will answer the question of why I had this particular idea. Uh, so, dear Marisha, can you please... Uh, mm, the, the next slide, please. Okay. Ah, thank you. So my idea is to conduct a scientific study on Internet and Sustainable Development Goals, publishing the results and present them during an online roundtable on the topic ICT and the concept of sustainability. Uh, so I want to do some research on how Internet can positively influence achievement of each CDG through a review of specific practices. The project have two main purposes, and I think that uh, it's oh, no, yes, it's okay. Th this slide. So the project have two main um, purposes. The first one is to contribute to the study of the relations between the internet and sustainable development goals by first providing that internet can positively positively influence achievement of each CDG. Uh, secondly, to demonstrate practical experience of the positive impact of the Internet on achievement of the CDGs. So the second purpose uh, is to develop a scientific discourse on the topic. And uh, mm, the next slide, please. Okay, uh, speaking about the objectives, they are the next. Explore the interaction between the Internet and CDGs, find patterns of the influence of the Internet on the achievement of uh, the CDGs, identify the positive impact of the Internet on the achievement of CDGs, uh, conduct an uh, analysis of significant initiatives in this area, and to put forward general recommendation based uh, on this research. So what I want to see as outputs in the framework of the purpose number one, I would like to explore how the Internet can positively impact the achievement of each sustainable development goals. And I also see an opportunity to achieve the following results on the second purpose, to draw attention to the topic, to stimulate discussion during the online roundtable on the topic ICT and concept of sustainability, to make a publication of an online collection of roundtable speeches or main points of discussion, and finally expand the research base and scientific discourse. So um, that's briefly uh, the presentation of my project, and I would like to end with the words of gratitude uh, and assure that as uh, EJF ambassador and the project manager of the Sustainable Development Solution Network Youth Russia, I believe in the slogan to create a sustainable world for future generation, and I would like to contribute to the achievement of sustainable development goals through science. So thank you very much for attention, and I'm open for your questions. Very well said. Thank you, Arvik, for a fantastic presentation. Without further ado, are there any comments? Are there any feedback points on site? Over to you, Mr. Mark. Thank you, Marisha, and thank you very much, Arvik. That's an yet another highly relevant piece of uh, work, research work, uh, as the Time ticks away now on the 2030 agenda. This is, and it's so relevant, of course, to the global digital compact uh, objectives as well. So, um, any uh, points, questions, feedback from uh, people in the room? I'm looking around the room uh, to people like Tracy, highly relevant for you, I would have thought. Any comment? Uh, no? Uh, no, I don't see anybody raising their hand uh, at, at the moment, uh, Mauricia. So uh, back, back to you. 
for online uh, reactions. Thank you so much. Hopefully, um, there will be some sparks of ideas uh, as the session continues on. I do have a few congratulatory uh, sentiments coming through on my comment section. Uh, and one of your fellow ambassadors, Shivam, also um, said a comment. Let me just go down. Let me see. It's actually Jim. He says, congratulations for your presentation. What are your expectations at the end of this project? And how do you plan to use the results? So thank you very much for the question. So as I mentioned, um, I think that uh, it will be a great uh, opportunity to involve the young generation uh, to do some research on the issue of sustainable development and internet. And uh, as a result, it, we can uh, publish um, an online collection uh, of uh, scientific articles on the issue and then present them during the round table that uh, can be international, of course, and in a hybrid format. And uh, so uh, by this, uh, we can develop um, um, scientific discourse on the issue and to draw attention to it. I think uh, something like this. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Arvik, for sharing. Uh, and I hope that answered your question, Jim. Uh, Mr. Fred Azore, please feel free, the floor is yours. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, so I just want to add up something little to what has been said, uh, because I think this is very good an initiative. And uh, the fact that the, the clock is ticking and the world is struggling as to how to be able to uh, achieve the sustainable development goals. And now, all of us are aware that the internet has actually become very essential and uh, cannot be taken out of the equations. And so uh, as we are looking at sustainable development goals, I think as you are looking at this from a research point of view, we should also be looking at uh, people who actually implement these kind of uh, sustainable development goals in terms of their education, in terms of poverty reduction, to uh, other like uh, implementation options that they do so that you are able to like blend the internet aspect of it to this uh, these initiatives that those organizations are already involved in so your research would be able to impact society very well if not uh, i'm afraid this might turn into a white paper which is very good though but in terms of implementation if you do not get uh, stakeholders or uh, organizations to partner to work together with who it might become very difficult for you to achieve it in real life and so i would be uh, very excited to see that this initiative actually comes to life not just in paper because in paper we actually hide a lot of knowledge but people don't see them because people don't look at them to read thank you Thank you very much for your comment. I will take it into account and to make you sure I will send invitation to all ambassadors to join my project. Thank you very much. Fantastic contribution there, um, Aravik. It actually answered my question. Uh, as you all know, as soon as you graduate from the IJF Youth Ambassadors Program of the Internet Society, you would become part of or have the opportunity to become part of the alumni network that we have here at the Internet Society. And so you would have access to all of the previous fellows that have graduated from programs before you and I would encourage collaboration, especially because of the relevance globally um, when it comes to your project, Arabic that um, once you join the alumni network, that you would reach out to your fellow uh, alums in, and that you would leverage on their connections, on their networks in order to increase the visibility of your work. 
and also perhaps enhance the impact thereof. So just a bit of an encouragement uh, from my side. Are there any comments or questions with regards to Aravik's initiative still in the room or on site? If not, we do have a, yes, we do have a, 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 um, a feedback point or question from Mr. Mark Carval with regards to the SIDS um, initiative mentioned earlier. Uh, Theo Rose, Shivam, Jim, I believe that would be you. So, Mr. Mark, over to you for your question. Yes, Please. thank you very much, Marisha, and thank you, uh, Aravik. I, I, my question is really generally if, if there was any particular focus amongst the um, roster of SDG issues on small island developing states, whether um, who, who, which face particular challenges, of course, because of the size of their communities, remoteness geographically, and so on. Have you uh, have you looked at that those particular issues as part of your initiative, or are you planning to do so in the future? Thank you. Uh, so thank you very much for your comment. So uh, what you you can see is just uh, maybe a draft project, and I think that uh, your idea it's great, and uh, I will think about it, of course, and um, I will try to do it uh, inclusive and comprehensive project. Perfectly said. Thank you so much, um, Aravik. Uh, again, uh, bringing me back to the point of collaboration will be key for you here. Uh, you have a very big initiative on your hands, but with many more, uh, you can definitely increase the impact of your work. And so don't hold back from uh, reaching out to as many networks as possible to support you in this initiative and to make it the best uh, possible um, version of what can come out of your work. And I wish you all all of the best. Moving on to our next presentation, we do have a group of lovely uh, young ambassadors that would love to share, but it would only be one of their team members that will be speaking today. I'm sure the others would um, engage more once it comes to the exchange uh, part of our discussion today. Uh, without further ado, Mr. Lennon, can I have you open your mic so that I can hear your lovely voice? Hello, Marisha. Can you hear me? Fantastic. Okay. Without further ado, I am going to now share my screen and share your presentation. And the floor is yours. Okay. Good evening, everybody. My name is Lenin, and I'm in the group with Madi, Omar, Paul, and Selby. Our group is represented from Ghana, Gambia, Kenya, and Rwanda. And our project has the tagline, the next gen project, which means the next generation project. But the former title of our project is education of secondary and tertiary students on internet governance and related concepts and intra-African collaboration. So in this presentation, I'll be taking you through why there's need for our project, what our objectives are in pursuing this project and how we intend to execute the project. And so on why there's need for our project. Moesha, can you move to the next slide? Thank you. So on why there's need for our project, we have two principal reasons. Our first reason is that our group observed as young Africans that the youth in our countries are getting exposed to internet governance way later than their contemporaries in other countries. And to practically demonstrate this, out of the five of us, four of us heard of internet governance and what it is for the first time after our tertiary education. In the course of being part of the Internet Society's Youth Ambassador Fellowship, we have met mentors from other countries that are currently in tertiary, but have been in the ecosystem for about three to four years which means that they've had the opportunity to build their capacity in the internet governance space way much more longer, even though they are relatively younger. And so we decided that to bridge this gap, there was need to focus and target senior high school and tertiary students with internet governance education in order to get them and introduce them into the ecosystem. Our second reason for pursuing this project is that the internet has become ubiquitous among the younger generation. Many people use it, and yet there's a conspicuous absence of 
internet education or digital education from our academic curricula. And it was interesting to find out at the youth summit this morning that it was not just within our African countries that this problem persists because the representative from the Asia Pacific region was actually advocating for digital literacy to be included as early as primary school because people get to know about digital literacy way too late. And so for these two reasons, we decided that our project is going to target senior high school and tertiary students to introduce them to internet governance and also educate them on digital rights related to the use of the internet and the risk that are associated and how to safely use the internet. Mauricia, the next slide, please. Yeah. So then, what are our objectives in pursuing this project? Our first objective is to introduce tertiary and secondary students to internet governance and concepts such as multi-stakeholderism to encourage, first of all, their early involvement in youth class and also educate them on the opportunities available for them to grow within the ecosystem so that they can build their capacity for a longer term and contribute more to the space as opposed to now where they come in later and soon they have to transition into the adult realm. Our second objective is also to create awareness over the risk associated with internet use, particularly relating to privacy implications and also help our younger siblings in tertiary and secondary schools to practice safe use of the internet and also know their rights associated with the use of these internet platforms. But more importantly and significantly, and in consistency with the Internet Society's mission, we hope to also raise advocates among these young persons in secondary and tertiary institutions. Just as we got to know about internet governance and the ecosystem through friends who are already in the system, we believe that if we introduce these secondary and tertiary students to these concepts early enough, they can also within their circles, educate and advocate and spread the knowledge that they have gained to their friends. Then together, we can raise a generation that is more conscious and aware of internet governance and safe use. That brings me to my final point of how are we going to execute this project? For purposes of execution, we are doing two things. First of all, one is going to be online and the second is going to be offline. Our online seeks to host a webinar in partnership with known internet governance entities, particularly ISOC, ICANN, Access Now, RiceCon, and then the youth governance, so that these entities can educate and introduce their work to the secondary and tertiary students who will be participating from across these four countries. Now we are partnering with these entities so that they can also introduce them to the volunteering opportunities available for them to participate and grow under the various organizations within the internet governance ecosystem. Partnership with these entities is also to leverage the reach that these entities currently have in engaging younger people within the ecosystem so that it is not just young students from these four African countries participating on the online webinar, but also it would be open to the public so that already users of these platforms who already know the organizations for the work that they do can also have the benefit of what we will be putting up there. But our offline project is intended to be carried out in the respective countries of the four jurisdictions involved, that is Ghana, uh, Rwanda, Gambia, and Kenya. We hope in terms of the physical and the offline project to make it an ISOC driven project. So we intend to partner with the Internet Society local chapters, and also importantly, the School of Governance, Internet Governance in our various jurisdictions. It is our belief that if we are able to execute the physical project in partnership with ISOC, it protects the longevity of the project because it can become an annual project driven by the local internet society chapter. Since every year we have new students come into our various institutions. And so every year we would have new set of young people to educate and introduce to our internet governance. But what is also good is that 
which of us within the group have experience with youth groups in our various countries. And so we intend to leverage on that experience and the youth organizations that we've already worked with in our countries to make this dream a reality. Ultimately, we believe that since the young people, particularly secondary and tertiary students, are recognized as the next internet experts and leaders, picking their interest early would make it good for them to participate in governance. But even if they don't participate in the formal internet governance space, if we get them the knowledge that they need, they can even as users to make choices that would contribute to an ethical and resilient and self internet. We hope that maybe next year at the IGF, we will see some of our participants from these workshops participate in the IGF as testimony of the growth that taking education to young persons can do in terms of bringing them into the ecosystem. We are glad to seek any support, partnerships, directions, and contributions, and are open for further engagement to make this project a reality. Thank you very much. And thank you for a fantastic presentation. Well done. Are there any comments on site? Any questions on site, Mr. Mark? Thank you, uh, Mauricia. And um, thank you, thank you, Lenin, for a very clear set of um, uh, objectives and deliverables of getting the next generation of people into, into the world of internet governance and understanding some of the key issues. And then, as you say, becoming part of those debates at future future IGF events and elsewhere. I, I see, uh, yes, a hand raised on the left. First of all, Tracy Hackshaw, if you'd like to go ahead, just quickly remind us of your credentials and, uh, uh, and then let's hear your question. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tracy Hackshaw. I um, actually was uh, responsible for some of this um, cohort's um, preparation for this IGF, so I think I'll stop there. <laughs> um, so, um, yes, it's a very good presentation, thank you. Um, I just want to suggest a couple um, potential partners. There are, there's work being done by a group called the APWG, the Anti-Fishing Working Group, uh, on the Stop Thing Connect, and they have a series of um, materials that have been published that have been already been validated and utilized <clears throat> in multiple languages, um, Stop Think Connect, that um, tend to be useful for younger people as well as for um, general users. Because one of the things you tend to find is that with this kind of work, you, you may think if you are doing it that it's coming from a position of knowledge but what we have found in doing this sort of sensitization is that many um, younger people don't have the um, ability to abs absorb the, the nuances of these issues. So while you may be you know, just saying, you know, protect yourself and do these things and do these things, etc., the messaging needs to be done in a certain, a certain way, and there are groups that have figured this out. So there are child safety um, protection groups, there are Stop Think Connect, even the ITU has done some work. So I think before you, you go out and do this project, um, I may, you may want to reach out to those groups as well, as, of course as ISOC, just to get the messaging right, so that you don't have a situation where you're, you, know, you think you're doing the right thing, but the message goes above their heads or goes um, awry. So I think I want to make that suggestion. Because I've seen some of those um, projects happen, and people come and they, they they sit and they listen and then they continue doing the same things because you haven't really, you know, gotten the message across. So just be, just be aware of that and um, reach out to the groups of the, who are doing this, who have done this, because they have just crafted that message in a certain way to probably make it a little more um, able to be absorbed by younger people. Thanks. Lenin, did you want to react to those suggestions? I just wanted to thank Tracy for those suggestions. We've noted the uh, groups he mentioned, so we would reach out to them and get it right. Thank you. I think I saw another hand on this side. Yeah, Rosie, thank you. 
Great. Um, thank you. And just to, so I have a question and a contribution as well. So I'm just going to start with the contributions. As um, Tracy has said, um, I heard you mention ISOC, Access Now, and the rest. Um, you are doing an educational training. I've not seen you mention any institution, um, educational institution, and I think that you should focus on that because, again, most of times, really, the non-technical community is left behind in terms of training. I'm speaking to that because I'm from the non-technical community, and I feel like anytime there's such training, you're focusing on institutions that already teach technical courses, leaving non-technical people. For example, I would also want you to extend your training to media institutions. We are also important. We want to be inculcated into the training and to the ecosystem. So do that. Then again, um, I'm glad that you mentioned Ghana as well, because um, from ISOC Ghana chapter, we are currently running um, ISOC Next Gen, which is similar to the program we are doing. We did it last year, um, this year, next year. We are going to hope to do that as well. So um, you should reach out to us, AB is part, so you could follow up onto that so that we pick it up from there. Now to my question shortly. I would want to find out what, what is the long-term goal of this. As Tracy said, right, the programs, the project happens, but after next year, do you have um, um, do you have plan of keeping it there in, in terms of um, I mean, having the training in those institutions, do you want to form a club? Do you want to, what exactly are you going to do so that it's not just one time education or webinar, whatever, but that it's a continuous thing for other people to fall up to, if that is clear for you? All right, Tiros, I'm going to answer this. Uh, my name is Sobi Abraham, I'm part of this team. Um, we mainly focus on internet governance training on this, and I'll answer the question basically from one to other. Um, aside partner, these agencies like Right um, Access Now, who run RightCon program, Internet Society Foundation, who also bring program for um, IGF, basically from the local level to the global level, ICANN and other stuff. We also reach out to the school on internet governance because they run a full section on training on internet governance. We are also trying to partner the university, the universities and the high schools because they are the main focus. Why are we doing that? The people from the universities are coming out of school. When they come out of the school, they join the working force within the, our ecosystem. They need to understand the best practices of internet governance, where they can preach out in their the various employed institutions. So we are targeting that. And we wanted to also make it a, a program that we, we may run every year for similar schools because we're trying to focus on the school section on their annual programs. Some do SLC week, so we use an SLC week session to train people on that with the partner agencies. When we are done, we have various internet governance clubs. We will move the students to that. We also want to do this to achieve um, a mentorship for people who are in already in the ecosystem so that we can connect to them. Basically, what I am doing is that since I've been into IGF, I've picked 10 to 20 people that I am training for the past six months. I share them ISOC links to register. I share them IGF links to, so this IGF, they are not here, but they are joining remotely to learn overview of it. Some also join ICANN meetings to learn. And I also said that there are some courses online that Internet Society is running, ICANN is running for free, they can learn that. Now these people, some of them are universities. They also extend to their friends and other staff. We want to close the gap that youth understand the technical aspect and the ecosystem structure. We want to involve the media too as well because they also go out loud on that. Last Friday, I was on the media on the TV station to talk about um, internet governance and what is happening even in Addis Ababa. These are the ways that we engage the media personalities also as well. Now, in terms of the team, lowering down to the basic high school level, we must also let them understand what is going on on the internet, because basically people also don't know what internet is really about. So basically we try to assess that. If I have answered your question, if there is any other question left, I can also answer that. All right, thank you very much. Okay, Mercy, I don't see any more hands in the room, so back, back to you for online uh, reactions. In that case, thank you so much. And thank you for the fantastic contributions from the on-site participants. 
I would encourage uh, our team uh, of stars to please take into account everything that has been shared with you. You are working with a critical group of people, uh, being our secondary and tertiary institution um, learners and students. So we have to make that distinction. It's very important because students do not want to be referred to as learners. Uh, I do have a comment uh, from Ariel. Uh, he says, a wonderful, hi, wonderful presentation on a key issue such as digital literacy. Question, or my question, that can be for a next step of the initiative. Do you plan to engage in person with young? Thank you very much, Mauritia. I think that is the offline phase of the project we are executing. The offline phase hopes to bring these students in person with the experts and our partners of education. So yes, it is not just the online hosting where we just talk to them, but then we are hoping to interface with them physically through the offline phase, which will be organized in the various jurisdictions that the members of these groups are, which for starters is Ghana, Rwanda, the Gambia, and Kenya. And he also specifically asked them um, uh, regarding teachers as well and partners. So, so uh, what happens when it comes to the uh, engagement is that even though the target are the students, mostly to be able to get access to the students, most of the educational institutions would have to go through the teachers or the institutions. So the teacher's presence there perhaps may be a learning for their own benefit, but they would be the shepherds of the students. But ultimately, it is the students themselves who are, are focused and reaching out to them. I hope that answers your question, um, Ariel, because he was really wanting to kind of drive in also that the, the, uh, the teachers and uh, the schools would be fantastic partners for you in your initiative. So definitely uh, be aware of that. Uh, I had some questions as well, but for the sake of time, we will move on to the next uh, presentation. And should time allow us at the end, uh, we would then be able to share those. But I did share a link as well to our Google document in the chat, and I will reshare it again for anyone who, who you know, you get an idea, Spark, or you want to ask any of our ambassadors a question, you would then be able to click on the link for the Google document and post your question or comment so that we can also make sure that that gets through to our ambassadors. Without further ado, we have, uh, well, Ariel is not presenting today. He did last time. So his counterpart, Mr. Jesse, will be the one speaking on behalf of his team. I just want to make sure because JC should be on site in the room. Uh, can you please speak on your microphone? Let's hear if you are audible. Yes, I can hear you, Marisha. I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you. <laughs> okay, this is fantastic. This is fantastic. Okay. I'm going to go to your presentation now and then make your uh, slides available to the audience as well. Let me share my screen. Right, over to you. Um, all right, uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon from wherever you are. Uh, my name is Jason Nathan Kalange, and I'm an IGF Youth Ambassador 2022. And together, I have a collaboration uh, initiative with my colleague, uh, Ariel. And uh, our initiative focuses on uh, building end users' capacity and awareness on encryption. And it's uh, based on research and public campaigns in Africa and Latin America. Next slides, please. Yes, yeah, so we focus on the use of technology uh, of a particular uh, significance, which is mainly uh, cryptography in the field of ICT. And uh, we also realize that encryption uh, supports more of free expression 
anonymity, access to information, and private communication as well as uh, privacy. So in this context, we uh, take uh, a scenario from the growing concerns about uh, mass surveillance online, and uh, we look at end-to-end -end encryption as one of the key steps uh, for protection. Uh, as we realize, many organizations and companies have teamed up uh, to promote uh, encryption, and uh, we have this evidenced from uh, the Global Encryption uh, Coalition and uh, ISOC's uh, encryption team, uh, among others. So still, uh, in the line of encryption, uh, we do realize that uh, end users do not necessarily uh, know much and understand uh, what end-to-end -end encryption implies for them and even the applications and different uh, tools they can use uh, to apply this. So our initiative's main goal uh, focuses on building the capacity of individuals and entities on encryption uh, so that uh, individual end users and uh, institutions uh, can understand and decide on how to use uh, online tools and that they can be able to consider to ensure that proper privacy and uh, protection as well as uh, transparency uh, is applied. Next slide, please. Yes, so uh, our initiative objectives and deliverables are based on creating public awareness uh, that will encourage institutions to uh, implement a culture of encrypting data in communication. We do realize with a case study, for example, in Uganda where I come from, uh, a couple of different institutions, especially in government and the private sector, actually do use encryption. However, there is no regulatory framework that actually governs uh, encryption policy and laws in Uganda. So this is something that we, for example, intend to see that we ignite within the national information security uh, policy and framework, which is also combined within the national cybersecurity uh, strategy, which is still a draft and not implemented because these are some of the issues that are actually missing out in this strategy based on uh, encryption. We also intend to build the capacity for institutions or the general public on encryption. We do realize that uh, still institutions and the public does hear and know uh, a little bit about encryption, but they do not really know how do we apply this in our day-to-day -day lives. How do we apply this within the communication and data uh, uh, communication channels that we, we do use on a daily basis. Uh, the other is to offer information uh, on the encryption systems available uh, in each country. Uh, we do realize that in Africa, for example, I think it's about uh, less than 15 countries in Africa that actually do have encryption policies. And if we cite out, for example, Tanzania, uh, Senegal, Tunisia, uh, just a couple of the few countries we can cite out. So a couple of different uh, countries in Africa do uh, realize that uh, we do not have information when it comes to this particular area. We only have a wide coverage on different policies that only address a wider scope uh, on cyber security. Uh, so we also intend to create a database on available encrypt, uh, encrypted tools in different countries to be displayed uh, as a map. My colleague Ariel will actually give more highlights on this particular uh, objective. Then we also intend to develop guidelines uh, for end users and institutions on how to implement uh, encryption. A couple of different institutions, for example, in government and the private sector do have uh, policies within the organizations. However, most of these guidelines are never implemented or they do not have better frameworks of how to implement them within their respective institutions. Uh, we also intend to organize a public uh, sensitization campaign on encryption through social media campaigns and traditional me uh, media. And this is focusing mainly on digital security and uh, cyber rights specifically. Next slide, please. Yes, yeah, so our study is uh, based on a background from ISOC's action plan of 2022. And then uh, we also look at uh, different stakeholders uh, like the Global Encryption uh, Coalition. Also global events uh, handled by the Global Encryption Coalition, which is the Global Encryption Day. Uh, we look at measuring the internet. We look at something coming from the Internet Society PALS 
and uh, also an extending uh, encryption. There are a couple of different uh, resources that are definitely available for reference on this particular subject that we're talking about. And uh, we will be very grateful to have inputs from you, questions, and any kind of collaborative interest that you might want to uh, share with us. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, my colleague Ariel will be uh, able to respond to a few questions and I'll chip in as well. Thank you. Perfectly said. And uh, yes, I'm glad to hear that Ariel will also be chipping in where possible. Lovely to always hear your thoughts. Uh, but before we get to that point, uh, Mr. Mark Carvel, are there any comments or feedback points on site? Um, th thank you, Mauricia. I'm looking for hands being raised around the room. I, I don't see any. I mean, I just have a comment that this is... Uh, from my previous government background, a very important issue, of course, encryption. And uh, I'm sure your initiative is probably uh, you know, scrutinizing the position of governments and law enforcement agencies and so on. It's to help advance the discussion and, and considerations of the pros and cons of um, defending uh, encryption from the perspective of governments and law enforcement. But uh, did you want to say a little bit on that? Or? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mark. Yeah, it's actually exactly what you're trying to uh, 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 imply. Uh, so we look at uh, doing more of checks and balances to scrutinize uh, encryption systems, especially within government, uh, because we do realize that uh, from a human rights background, uh, we always uh, uh, have some input mostly targeted within defending the rights of human rights defenders and actors, but also while creating in a secure space for freedom of expression, but respectful. Yeah. Thanks, okay. Uh, I don't see any hands being raised. So Marisha, back to you, I think. Thank you so much. Uh, same here. Uh, no comments or questions being raised on our comment section of the chat here. Um, but I do, uh, there's actually one from Izan. He says, just came in. He says, I echo Mark's comments. Governments have taken initiatives to, re to reduce the scope of encryption given other aims such as child protection. What approach would be taken to address their concerns? So Ariel, Jesse. Uh, Could I? Okay. Well, as, as mentioned by, by Jesse, the initiative covers uh, like two types of main goals. For one side, it's a public awareness campaign. And on the other side, it's a database that basically triggers users to understand the options they have to let's say ensure that the apps they use uh, uh, offer encryption. So in, in the second part, it's up to the individuals to, to choose the options. It's more about having the knowledge regarding the, the tools. Regarding the first one, the public awareness campaign, we would cover those debates in, in the material, of course, but again, it's more about what encryption means and the debates around it. So it's, it's not that concern about the policy debates in the sense of what measures the government should take. It's more about ensuring that the wider audience have the knowledge about what encryption means, what are the debates underpinning the, the use of encryption, and that any user can decide whether they want or not uh, use apps, communication apps that offer encryption. Ah, he says um, it addresses his concern. Thank you so very much for that. Uh, Marisha, any other questions? Yes. May, may I, following Alejandra's first comment, we would like to start the conversation with all the attendants. And for instance, as mentioned, uh, we would like to create a database to be mapped so end user can understand the options of encryption in their own countries. The idea is that an end user enter the, the website and understand in his or, or her country 
what are the options and the features of all the communication tools available there. So some of the variables we consider are the country of origin of each communication tool, the type of tool, let's say messaging app, emailing, etc. Uh, if it presents regular transparency and impact reports, and if the company had any data leaks in the previous months. So can you think about other relevant variables you would love us to include in such a database? Fantastic question posed there to our on-site and our online participants. Um, I will give our on-site uh, participants the opportunity to answer our team first. Mr. Mark, are there anyone for, uh, in the room uh, ready to respond to Ariel's question on what they would like included in the database he has just explained? I'm looking around the room, uh, Mauricio. I, does anybody want to have a go at, a, at an at a initial comment about the database? No, nobody in the room, Mauricio. Duly noted, uh, possibly people still need an opportunity to soak it in and um, be able to uh, see the possible uh, database or what you have already created in terms of uh, categories so that uh, they would then be able to contribute more comprehensively on what can be added. Uh, we will uh, oh, we will make uh, the all the presentations uh, available. I will just find out from the IGF Secretariat um, which platform we need to share that on. Um, Mr. Izan, you have a contribution to make. Sure, I just wanted to um, uh, speak on you know Ariel's comment. Um, I think one of the things that definitely needs to be included is the usability of these tools as well. Um, because quite a lot of times when you're making a, a use of tools uh, that leverage encryption or privacy standards, uh, they involve more than the usual amount of, uh, you know, technical capability uh, in order to actually fully make use of them. So you want to think of tools that outside the box are already privacy protecting and make use of encryption versus those tools that require a bit more working on, you know, your end to try to make them uh, effective, I guess. Um, so I think that's something that needs to be reflected on the database to see whether the usability and user friendliness of these tools is something that can also be accounted for and other people's experiences of what the, the key points might be to take into account before you decide to use such a tool. I hope that makes sense. Yes, totally sense. Thanks, Aysan. Perfect. Are there any other feedback points for our group um, from our comments in the section um, in the online audience? Going once, going twice. Any ideas on what you feel would be important for your region or country that should be uh, taken into consideration when it comes to the database that uh, the team so wonderfully explained to us today? All right, none for now, but um, I'm sure there will be more coming uh, as everyone has a chance to view your work. Um, and Ariel has also just shared his email address as well as JC's email address. So if you would like to speak directly with them, and I would encourage all of our ambassadors to share their contact details as well. Um, if you, anyone in the room, on site, online, if you would like to directly speak to our ambassadors about their initiatives, support them, we would really encourage this. And so please feel free to reach out to them. Fantastic. We will move swiftly along so that at the end, if there are any, uh, well, if there's any allotment of time left, we can take uh, comments and feedback for the overall um presentations, anything that might have popped up after people spoke and then uh, their time for uh, engagement had passed. So we might have another opportunity. So stay tuned, stay tuned indeed. Uh, without uh, Mauritius. taking any further time on my end, um, I want to check if Vincent, Vincent Okonko, are you in the room? Can you open your mic? I'd love to hear your voice. Hi, Marisha. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. Fantastic. I'm going to share my screen and allow you to take the floor. 
Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Good morning, afternoon, evening. My name is Vincent Tonko. I am one of the youth ambassadors for 2022. Um, I'll be presenting on behalf of my group, our initiative, which is titled A Toolkit for Youth Participation in Global Internet Governance. Um, I'll quickly run through it. I'll be speaking for about two minutes. Um, Bohan, who is a member of the team, would be speaking for about two minutes, and then would have about a minute. There are about four Saba to also um, introduce some new perspectives. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, um, so so in terms of what we're hoping to achieve with the initiative, um, the, the idea behind the initiative essentially is we understand that there, there are a lot of young persons who should be participating in internet governance conversations that are not participating. Um, we understand that youth heavily depend on the internet to create economic value, to learn life skills, to build communities. And increasingly, they're becoming a larger and larger part of internet users. So they have to um, be involved in those conversations that not only affect them, but to some extent might affect the direction of their lives going into the future. Um, I mean, there's no gain saying that there's a lot of, you know, uh, shortage in terms of youth participation and in internet governance and general global, global digital policy conversations. Um, this is partly due to lack of awareness, um, the formal requirements for involvement in youth um, driven internet governance conversations, differences in opportunities available across regions, language barriers, and things of this sort. Um, next slide, please. So, following that, um, we're looking at putting together a toolkit which aligns with the Internet Society's activities for shaping the future of the internet and um, empowering people to take action as part of the Internet Society Action Plan. Um, so my colleague Bohan would give a little bit of an information on what the toolkit would cover and the test cases that we've currently identified for use of the toolkit. Okay. Uh, can we move to the next slide, please? Yeah. So when we talk about the toolkit, there are two purposes for doing this. The first one is to map existing opportunities. And the second is suggest a new format for attracting the youth to get into the field. So when we're thinking about these uh, kinds of toolkits, the first of all is easy to use. So if the, the young particip participants in the internet governance uh, look through our toolkits, he or she will find an easier way to get involved with the whole research and uh, the whole uh, platform. No, uh, not only for the, the national level, but also for the global level and the other opportunities for there to de develop their skills. And the second one, we try to uh, suggest a new format, uh, which is called the model IGF, because not so many students and, uh, and, uh, and the young people, they got the opportunity to get involved with the uh, regional IGF or the, the, the international IGF, such a high level, kinds of events. So maybe in, the, in some schools, they can do their own uh, model IGFs. So that's why we have two parts. And uh, the first part is the handbook. And the second part is a concept paper for the model IGF. And uh, the youth participation toolkits uh, will be a multilingual version of the toolkits. We will be, it will be translated into English, into Mandarin, and uh, uh, Swahili, French, and Spanish, because we are very uh, how can I say, we have so many people in this group. And uh, can we move to the, the next slide, please? Yeah, yeah. so next slide, please. Yeah. And uh, this is the whole structure of the, uh, no, 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 this is the previous one, yeah, yeah. And uh, this is the whole structure of the two case. We can see the participants book uh, is the first one, and uh, it will identify the existing parts from the international level, from the regional level, from the academy area, and then from other area that, that can be referred to this. And uh, it also talks about the contents I have, have already been talking about. And uh, uh, maybe and maybe some skills, the participants, they need to uh, require for them before they attend these kind of uh, uh, activities. And uh, the second part is the concept paper for the model IGF. 
And we also involve with the youth voices because there are lots of pioneers of the uh, young people who get involved into the internet governance. So we try to make an interview with them to see what's their idea about how to get engaged and uh, what is the current problem and uh, how can we make better in the future. And uh, so according to these three parts, we're gonna put it together and try to make a use IGF guidebook for the Ethiopian uh, use IGF. And uh, uh, we will welcome the pioneer and the, what we can call the founder of the Ethiopian use IGF, Saba, also one of a member of our group to give the, a, brief, a very brief introduction for the Ethiopia use IGF. Saba, please. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much, Bohan. My name is Sava. I'm one of the 2022 um, ambassadors. And uh, I'm going to present a little bit about the Ethiopian use IGF. So regarding different forms of use engagements in the IGF process, um, the, IGF, I, I, the IGF Secretariat has recognized around 34 use IG, IGF initiatives across the world, and only six of them are from the Africa region. So these initiatives mainly encourage and involve young people in a substantive um, discussions on internet governance. However, in my country, Ethiopia, there is no such initiatives that aims to engage the use in internet governance discussions. So we believe that young people by themselves can bring a unique set of skills, experiences, and ideas to the table regarding IG discussions if the platform is present. That's why it's very important to have these toolkits in order to establish the Ethiopian use IGF initiative that engages, encourage, and empower the use to inform te technological developments in public policy discussions. So the Ethiopian use IGF um, aims to raise awareness about internet governance and provides a platform to voice their opinions amplify them and contribute to technical uh, and public policy discussions. So this initiative aims at building a new uh, leaders of internet that who are motivated to learn, engage, and take actions to strengthen the internet governance poli policy ecosystem within Ethiopia and beyond. So the toolkits for youth participation in global internet governance will help in guiding the setting up of the IGF initiative in Ethiopia. So the, the Ethiopian use IGF initiatives will serve as a test case for, for the toolkits and lessons from, the, from this initiative will be used in fine tuning that toolkit. Um, thank you so much. We are very open um, for, further, for, for further partnerships and um, discussions. If you have any questions, suggestions, um, you are very welcome. Fantastic. Without wasting any time, Mr. Mark Carvel, any feedback from the on-site participants? Okay, uh, Manusia, that was a very uh, uh, wide-ranging, very uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, presentation. I'm looking around the room for any reactions. I see one on the right there. Yeah, please, please go ahead. Remind us of your credentials and the, so okay. thank you um, hello again my name is from russia and i'm from ethiopia uh, i just want to ask my colleagues have uh, um, how can we access this toolkit as a developer where there are some of us who can contribute to this initiative here in ethiopia and how can we access the toolkit that are available in ethiopia thank you May I answer? Uh, thank you very much for the question. We will always um, welcome any contribution to the development of this toolkit. We will start preparing it first as a group within the Youth Ambassador Program and will further uh, publish the first drafts for the consultations for additional contributions from the regions, from different countries. And we will make sure to communicate it as widely as possible. Thank you. Okay, any, any other quick comments, points from, from the room? I don't um, Just to add. Yeah, please. Um, apologies. 
Yes, just add on behalf of the group. Um, you can always send emails. Um, if you would like to get involved in the initial draft, you can send emails and um, we would we'll respond to you. And our emails are on the presentation. Yep, of course, that applies also to all the uh, presentations. I'm sure a lot of people will be taking away a lot of very uh, useful information and will be thinking of points to, to raise subsequently. Um, no other hands in the room, Mauricia. Back to you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Mark. Um, I'll grab that mic uh, and quickly mention because I know that we must be aware of time and we just have one more presentation to go to the end of, uh, to conclude actually this wonderful engagement we've had today. Um, but just to pay attention to the comments that has been shared for the team, uh, one of your fellow ambassadors, uh, Mr. Paul Levy says, the idea of a model IGF in schools is really thoughtful, Bo and team. So very thoughtful initiative and he acknowledges that. Fantastic contribution, Paul. And uh, I believe there was one additional comment. Uh, let me just double check. Yeah, from Izan. He says, I agree as well uh, with Paul, I believe. So he said, uh, plus one to model IGF. It is a great way to introduce um, the concept. So everyone is behind you and supporting you in your initiative, uh, Bo and team. We also look forward to seeing what will come uh, next year when it, uh, when the launch of the Ethiopia IGF, uh, Youth IGF takes place and also when the toolkit becomes available to the public. So many hands are ready to grab it. So we wish you just all the best in your developmental process and in your working process going forward uh, and trust that there's a very high interest in the work that you are doing. So please remain committed stay steadfast and see it all the way through. You were opening your microphone, but I just wanted to give you a quick yeah, second we to say something to you. Want to take sure? Yeah, and the thanks for the for the presentation. Uh, he she, she, he made the presentation and the, the model IGF uh, idea comes from Katerina. She's on site and uh, we will work harder to get all the uh, satisfaction uh, to, feel, to fulfill all the, how can I say, the, the, the thinking thoughts and the, the looking forward from the participants. Uh, thank you so much. Very well said. Uh, just a final comment from JC coming through. He says, amazing and we'll be happy to collaborate on a model IGF2 with the Uganda Youth IGF. So there's another potential collaboration that just popped up there. Um, and then Katerina says, uh, the realization will surely be a teamwork effort. So definitely echoing what Bo has just shared. Thank you so much team for a wonderful contribution and initiative, great work. Uh, for our final uh, presentation of the day, I'd like to hand over to Mr. Bibek. Mr. Bibek Siwak, can I kindly hear your beautiful voice so that I can be yeah. sure to share your, your presentations. Thank you, Mauricia. I'm audible. Yes, you are. That's Thank you. great to know. Great to know. I'm getting yours, your presentation ready. Now let's uh, share my screen shortly. Right, screen coming up. But you, Bibi. Thank you, Mauricia. Hello and namaste, everyone. This is me, Vivek Silwal from Kathmandu, Nepal, and together with my fellow. IGF Youth Ambassador Osno, we have a plan this initiative about incentivizing the digital citizenship, which is a proactive approach for creating a comprehensive platform to make internet a safer space. Next slide, please. So I'm going to talk about the introduction of our project. 
why we choose this project, what are its core objective and purpose, what methodologies we are going to implement in this project and the conclusion of this specific project. Next slide, please. Thank you. So we actually going to name this project as Internet Gyan. Uh, Gyan means a Sanskrit word for knowledge and it's relevant for five or six languages. So what is in Internet Gyan? It's a data-driven platform to raise awareness about the internet safety and meaningful use of of internet, internet governance, and developing of ownership of digital citizenship among the next generation youth by incentivizing or rewarding the learning process. Next slide, please. So how do we incentivize the learning process? So as I've already told, our major target group on the project would be high school students and university students to make them aware about the ownership of digital citizenship, safer and meaningful use of internet, and making them key leaders to proliferate the internet safety within the surrounding family and friends. So it is a data-driven platform such that all the capacity development by the platform and its activities would develop in a feedback model. So it would create a mobile application and website, and it would have interactive learning models where the modules, the aim of the platform is to create a multitude learning interactive models and various topic of internet infrastructure, safety, governance, and meaningful use of internet for youth. So it would actually partner with fintech and businesses to reward the learning process after a successful completion of the modules. Students would be rewarded with coupons and bonus from partner organizations on successful registration and completion of certain tasks. So we are planning to make youth as envoy to the community where youth are the most capable and eligible to share and proliferate the learning to the community in terms of digital literacy and safety. This will also be empowered to represent themselves as a community leader. So our learning will mainly focus on the case study method of learnings. So the platform will em emphasize on related case and similar examples to relate with real life incidents of internet issues and even success stories of using meaningful use of internet. Next slide, please. So why did we choose this particular initiative? And we look at both the demographic of Nepal and Haiti, where about one quarter of the total population is the of age groups 13 to 24. And about 50% of this population in both of the countries are internet users. And out of those 50%, maximum of the internet users are social media users. But that's not really the internet we want to promote in coming days. Using of internet in any a community or any economy should help in socioeconomic development of the country. So we already have a lot of capacity development programs, internet awareness programs, but the effectiveness of them are rarely measured and success of the programs are rarely even tabulated in any points. So the, any capacity development is for a specific purpose that increase complexity and challenges in proper implementations. One undeniable fact that awareness and capacity development is not enough and needs a more proactive approach to internet safety within the proliferation of internet. The ownership of digital citizenship should be also developed within the internet users specifically use. So while these plans and policies are being made for capacity development, it primarily lacks the target group and target areas for awareness and action areas which can be reinforced by the this data-driven capacity development program. With all these ever-evolving problems, it is a dire need to establish a platform to bridge this gap, bring, bringing the youth as invoice. Next slide, please. So what is our core objective and purpose? So our core objective is creating this comprehensive learning platform that incentivizes the learning process, the feeling of ownership, digital citizenship, ownership of digital citizenship in next generation youth, promoting digital literacy and safer use of internet, promoting internet society's vision and action plan at grassroots level, empowering youth as stakeholders in internet governance, creating synergy between digital space promotion and in learning internet safety, uh, the data for good initiatives where we use the data from this platform in other capacity development program and vice versa. And it also targets for in capacity development programs and awareness and promoting socioeconomic development by promoting fintechs and e-commerce. Next slide, please. So once again, our core objective is targeting the next generation leaders on basics of this uh, pillars of development in internet safety, making internet more safer and resilient space by making them empowered in this community. Next slide, please. So talking about the methodology, how we are going to make it an interactive and rewarding platform. 
first we create uh, we promote this platform in different schools and colleges and they register for this website or in application. So they create a profile and users answer a specific set of questions on their knowledge and understanding of internet and safety scenario questions. So in a step two, user would be assigned with three compulsory modules. The first one is on technical aspects of internet, the second one on safer and meaningful use of internet, and third on the multi-stakeholder internet governance module. So additional two modules would be assigned based on the answer questionnaires on topic like online transactions, child safety on internet, cryptocurrencies, and etc. So on step four, participant would answer multiple choice questions and be gifted with coupons and discount codes after passing the test. Users can engage more and take on new modules, mini courses, and participation and participate in the event as well as do referrals to friends for additional rewards. So our final objective is to create a community that contributes in making internet a safe space. Next slide, please. So implementing this project, we have a tentative uh, work schedules where the first four to six months would be a preparatory phase on developing platform, creating and researching study materials as we had discussed earlier where this material can be resourced. And after the launch of the platform, there would be awareness programs in school and colleges and also joint promotional campaign with partner companies to make this space more proliferating. And we have three development phase where we add additional modules and growing of the system for even bigger targeted audiences. And our final and development phase would be mini courses in internet governance, internet safety, and bridging to the youth IGF and other capacity development programs. So earlier we had a discussion about where this platform would be ending on how plans to engage the youth on further activities. I think our initiative should be as realistic as possible and the target so our objective should be within our range where we can analyze what wrong thing we did or what are the things needed to be improved. This part of this initiative is just a complement to the existing process, not any replacement to the process that are in this space right now. Next slide, please. So actually, uh, this conclusion I have to draw from the audiences. I'm actually going to ask audience uh, questions for the conclusions. Marisa, can you get to the next slide, please? Okay, so I'm going to ask audience this questions. What do you see in this image? Uh, those in the online, they can write in the message. And those in the hall, please, can you tell what do you see in this image? Are there any comments? So we've definitely um, smoothly transitioned to the discussion and exchange part of, of this presentation. So, Mr. Mark, any questions or comments from the room? No. What do they see on the screen? Thanks, thanks, Marisha, and thank you very much, Bibek, for such a uh, very clear uh, presentation. Uh, I, I especially liked your thinking about the, the phases of taking forward the platform and, and promoting awareness and so on. It's very impressive. Um, so, uh, any responses to Bibek for uh, reactions and contributions in the room? Uh, no, no immediate reactions. I'm sure, again, it's a, it's a case of uh, people taking away uh, what they've heard from you, Bibek, and uh, and thinking about it, and then perhaps getting in touch uh, subsequently. So, uh, Marisia, back to you. Maybe online, you want to pick up anything there? Thank you. Absolutely, we've got plenty actually. Um, Shivam says your image looks like a Pokemon. Um, let me see if I can scroll down here nicely. Uh, let's see who else. Alejandra, a creative person, Alejandra says she can't really see anything. Oh, the comments are so funny. Uh, let me see what else uh, are people seeing. Turner says she's, uh, that, that's so precise. Let me try and uh, oh. I will Marcia, can you share the slide? Bit. Yes, I'm going to share it in a little bit. I'm just checking the comments. Uh, Izan says he sees a scene from an, an anime show. Um, Katerna says she sees a bike rider in a helmet. Um, and Medea said to Katerna's comment that it is so precise. So I'm going to reshare my screen and uh, hand back over to you, Vivek. Yes, uh, can we get to the next slide? Sure. 
Okay, now it's a frog. Uh, thank you to all those who had answers. So exactly this awareness process is similar to this process. So once you see this frog, you go back to the image. Can we go back to the previous picture, Mauricia? I can try. So now there's no way you can't unsee the frog. So that's exactly what we want to conclude in this process is that once we bring youths to awareness, what internet awareness really is, what internet safety is, going back home, they are not able to, or sorry, um, they will follow or abide by the rules. Okay, these are the standards. These are what we have seen. So you can't really unsee the things you see. That's what the awareness process is really about. And that is what our core objective of this initiatives. So with that, I want to conclude my presentation. Thank you. And questions and comments are welcome. Well done. That is fantastically, fantastically done. Okay. Um, any comments or further feedback from the on-site participants? Rishya, I don't see any uh, comments in the room. Uh, maybe people realize we're running right out of time now and people are coming in for the next meeting, which starts in about 10 minutes, I think. Okay. So perhaps we better wrap up. Yep. And uh, maybe Alejandro definitely. wants to say a few words too. Thank you. Definitely, definitely, for sure. Um, we just had a few here. Uh, but I'm sure, Bibek, you can check in the comment section for some of the, the, the other feedback points that came through from the team. Uh, before I close, Ms. Alejandro Prieto, any final words from you? Yeah, thank you. I just want to say that it was amazing. Thank you so much. So I'm going to thank first you, Marisha, for the great online moderation. It was really wonderful what you've done. Thank you so much. Mark, on-site moderation, amazing. Thank you. It's the first time I'm seeing, first time. I'm seeing a hybrid model that is actually working perfectly. We had engagement from on-site people, from online people. Fantastic. And you both did it work. So actually what you've done is great. Thank you very much. And of course, our uh, youth, uh, IDF youth ambassadors. I have to say, every time I listen to your presentations, to your initiatives, or just reading what you're presenting, I open my mouth and say, what amazing things they are doing. It's not that you just work hard, really hard on these things and you get it done by the time. We know that we, we were quite busy completing the program, attending all the sessions, thinking about ideas, making it, making it like on an initiative mode, working together with people who you didn't even know uh, three or two months ago. And now you are all working together, together in teams, like if you were in a classroom, right, face-to-face, -face, or even friends, right? So this is, this is amazing. And the content you put together deserves a round of applause. So I, want, I would like everyone to unmute and join me. Clapping, clapping for this great job that you have done. All the ambassadors, thank you very much. And this is just the beginning. You just presented things that you are going to do and you are going to do them, right? So I hope to see you in maybe a few months, maybe invited to an alumni uh, uh, event that Mauricia will help us uh, coordinate and you will present what you've done from today when you present it to the audience, your ideas and initiatives. And in some, in the, I would say, near future, what are the implications and the impact that your initiatives are having? So thank you so much. Um, back to you, Marisha, for the final words. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and really, that was so perfectly said that all I can add is fantastic work, team. Congratulations. You did well. Thank you for everyone at the on-site venue who Oh my goodness, your participation, your just your support in attending. We are so grateful and we thank you so much for your time. Mr. Mark Carvel, you are fantastic. Thank you so much for all that you did to make sure that this uh, session goes off smoothly. To anyone that wants to find out more about uh, the Internet Society Fellowships and as well as the IGF Youth Ambassador Program going forward, please feel free to reach out to fellowships 
at isoc.org. That's fellowships at isoc.org for any further questions or comments. Uh, and we hope to see you or hear from you very soon. And take care. Well done, everyone, and have a great day. Bye-bye for now.